Folsom Field in Boulder, Colorado, it is Big 12 football presented by Kia Sierra. And today, the number four team in the nation, the Oklahoma Sooners, take on the Buffaloes of Colorado. And what a challenge it is going to be today for the Buffaloes as they face the top scoring team in the nation, the Sooners averaging 61 plus points per game. Hi, everybody. Joel Myers alongside Dave Lapham, and welcome to the University of Colorado. We all knew going into the season the Oklahoma Sooners were going to be a solid team offensively, but, Dave, they are way ahead of schedule. And, Joel, they're way ahead of schedule because there was a question of quarterback. Well, Sam Bradford has answered that question with an exclamation point. Look at these numbers. He's completed at least 73% of his passes every single game for the season, 78%. 14 touchdowns, just two interceptions. And as a quarterback, what you look for is the respect, trust, and confidence in your team. Sam Bradford has earned every single bit of that. Well, the Buffaloes of Colorado already have as many wins this year as they had all of last season when they went 2-10. and 10. But to be able to compete with the number four team in the nation, Dave, a near-perfect game is a necessity. On both sides of the football and special teams, but defensively, Jordan Dizon will be the leader, averaging 14 tackles a game. That leads the country. They only have four takeaways on the season. They have to do better than that. They have to take the football away from this potent Oklahoma offense. On the other side of it, Cody Hawkins, a quarterback, has to be smart with the football. He has thrown six interceptions, can't afford to do that against the Sooners. So we get ready. It's a beautiful day for football at Folsom Field. And the defending Big 12 champions, the Oklahoma Sooners, on the road to start league play as they take on the Buffaloes. Big 12 football presented by Kia Sierra is up next. Combo Eat, Drink, Play. And by Mitsubishi Motors, driven to thrill. One of the great settings in the Big 12, alongside the Rockies. Homecoming weekend. Today's game presented in FSN HD and brought to you by Hitachi. So homecoming for the Buffaloes. And are these guys going to spoil it for them? The number four team of the nation. We'll find out over the next three hours. Let's head down to Jim Knox now. Knoxie. Coach, the game plan. How do you knock off one of the top-ranked teams in the nation in Oklahoma? What are the keys? Got to do our job. You know, we've got we got a chance to make kicks. We got to get them. We got to get in the A gap. They throw you the ball. You got to catch it. Simple as that. We played against great teams. We got to put it all together. Best of luck, Coach. Thank you. All right, Jim. So we're ready to go. The defending champs on the road, and in fact, on the road for three consecutive games. They started with three home games. As Hartley gets ready to kick it away. Back deep over to the bottom side of the screen is going to be Byron Ellis, the running back, and then Terrence Wheatley, their big play artist, out of the secondary. He is a couple of yards deep in the end zone. So Hartley, the senior from South Lake, Texas. Fortunately, it's a good day in Colorado for that guy. Barrel and all. Game time temperature right around 70, and we are underway at Folsom Field. Good directional kick. From the goal line, it's Ellis. And what a collision at the 18-yard line. Give him the 19, and he paid for it. Offensive lineup, all presented by Colorado for head coach Dan Hawkins, his son starting once again at quarterback. And Cody, throwing well over the last couple of games. A mistake here and there, but for the most part, you see the 275, he had better than 300 yards the week before in a loss to Florida State where they just couldn't convert on third down. The thing is, Joel, six interceptions in four games. He's had mulligans, and, and you can't have mulligans against Oklahoma. Oklahoma is too good. They will take your mulligan, your mistake, all the way back to the house. You have to be sound in where you put the football against the Sooners. The senior from Culver City, California, out of Venice High School, Byron Ellis is the starting tailback. Not Hugh Charles. Charles, good man out in open space. Early he got movement. it right. Early right movement. away, it's well. It's going to be a dead ball foul on a delay of game. Fence. That's Five a, yard penalty. First down. How about an ominous beginning for homecoming? Our referee today is Randy Crystal. They got to snap the football before the play clock expires. I think some of the guys look, look to me. Well, I guess there wasn't early. I thought the left tackle was a little bit early. Big, big six foot inch, six foot eight inch Tyler Columbus. But play clock did expire, and as you said, Joel, coming off the sideline, got to be ready to get to the line of scrimmage and run it. Now the back judge comes up and wants to reset the play clock. Now, what did Byron Ellis do so poorly on that first down? Because he is out of the game already, and you, Charles, is in there. Changed the play. <laughs> Decided, you know what? I didn't like that first call. 
Gear with a tight end shifts over to the left side. Toss it. Can he get a block? Oh, yeah. There goes Hugh Charles in the space. I found a land on the left side. We talked about it, and the coaches say he's not a tackle to tackle guy. He's better out on the edge in open space. Brought down by free safety Nick Harris. And right away, the coaching staff took Nick Harris to the sideline and said, Look, you have to line up differently. And Hugh Charles last week taking the direct snap, and he's faking to Ellis. And Byron Ellis has thrown him a block. They're going to make people miss in space. Very, very fine running back, getting everything he can yards after first contact. And then, of course, he takes to the house on that play, making people miss. Ellis in the backfield. Hawkins throw in on second and five, and Sprague's available. He's got the first down out to the 38. Dusty Sprague pulling it off. Well, nice little route. What you have to do if you're Cody Hawkins against Oklahoma's defense, Joel, is throw with anticipation and accuracy. You have to know the segment for the quadrant of the field you're throwing to and get the ball out of your hand quickly. That time, Cody Hawkins got the ball out of his hand very quickly and very accurately. It's going to have to be that way with the kind of sacks. In fact, they had six last week, the Oklahoma Sooners. So first down outside of the 38. Charles knifes his way between his tackle and guard for about three yards. Brought down by Alonzo Dotson, the right end. Now defensively for the Sooners, and this is one of the best defensive units in the nation. As you look at their 11. And Lofton coming off a career best 14 last week. They are fifth in total defense in the nation. We'll go over some of the numbers because they are gaudy numbers for the defense, defensive unit. Lofton averaging 10 and a half tackles a game. Second in the conference, number 18 in the country. Very active at middle linebacker. High formation on second and seven from the 42. Cantrell is going to be in front of Charles. So the blitz off the edge. It is a run blitz, and the man off the edge got him, Reggie Smith, their big playmaker, especially on returns. The junior from Edmond, Oklahoma. No game on the carry. In fact, the loss of a half a yard. And when uh, Oklahoma is deciding to do that, that's when Colorado has to think about throwing the football. Is that a hot read, a check with me at the line by the quarterback? Yeah, and, and you know, they were at the line of scrimmage for a while. A lot of pressure on the offensive line to hold your water that long against a defensive front like Oklahoma. And they went with a hard count halfway through all of that lapse of time. And Colorado's offensive line, very, very disciplined. Almost got Oklahoma to jump. And Marcus Granger was in that boot zone a little bit. On the high snap out of the gun on third down. Hawkins to the, well, the walk-on, Scotty McKnight. He's corralled right away. Be short of the first down by about three. And McKnight, one of the great stories in college football this year, among the leaders in freshmen with receptions. And yeah, he's got 23 catches, Joel, averaging almost 13 per catch, a couple of touchdowns, and Hawkins feels real comfortable getting him the football. Even though Hawkins got rid of that ball so quickly, he was hit and taken to the ground by that sound Oklahoma pressure. They, they only rushed four and dropped seven and still got a hit on the quarterback. Matt Delano. His net is only 34 yards. Let him go, guys. Reggie let him go, Smith let him go, let him go. waits. He'll take it back at about the 14. And he makes a miss. He's got the sideline, couple of blocks, and pulled down. Right at the 29. Otherwise, he may be gone for good. Big play by Brad Jones, the outside linebacker. A return of 15 yards after the 41-yard punt. Offensively. For the highest scoring team of the nation. Sam Bradford, that is the story right now. 78%. That's his completion rate because there's we're not going to even get into the equation of how you get to pass efficiency. 78% with 14 touchdowns and only two interceptions. Mind boggling. Completing better than three out of every four times he throws the football. Looking to the slot man oh. and it put in the ground. Is it a catch no. now? Slot Man Iglesias and then it pop right through his arms. A junior from Colleen, Texas. Now there was a little contact as well, but he should have caught this football, Joel. You're right. The ball is right on the money, a little crossing pattern. He gets lit up as soon as the as soon as the ball arrived by Jeff Smart. And Jeff Smart put his helmet on that football as well as on Iglesias. That's just a very, very good football play by the linebacker running from inside out in his, in his drop and pass cover. That's close to a catch, Dave. That's a break, it's not a fumble. Second and 10 from the 29, on the delay. Alan Patrick belted right at the line. Well, the Colorado defense is going to be the determining factor today. 
We know that it's going to be tough for the offense of Colorado to score. Can the Colorado defense keep them in the game, led by that young man, Jordan Dizon, who leads the nation in stops? They've got a good front four. In fact, Hippolyte and Nicholas, two of the better defensive tackles in the conference. Well, I think Oklahoma felt that uh, Hippolyte and, and uh, Nicholas were the best tackle team they played last year. In the game last season, Nicholas ended up with nine tackles, and Hippolyte had five, and three of those were for loss. So they're the captains to that defense, those two interior defensive tackles, and they keep people off of Jordan Dyson. Spread the defense with two to each side. Blitz from Dyson and a drop from the running back to Marco Murray. Well, right now, 0 for 2 is Sam Bradford. He should be 2 for 2. And when you're completing 78% of your passes, the quarterback has to throw it accurately, and the people catching the football have to do exactly that. And that's a football you can't let get into your shoulder pads. You got to get your hands out there. Marco Murray in great shape. Get your hands out in front of your body and catch the football with your hands. He let it, he was going to cradle it once he hit his shoulder pads and hits plastic, does crazy things. 43 yard average from Michael Cohen. Chase McBride winning back deep. Little guy, the senior from Fulton, Colorado, only 5 7. And Cohen belts it away. Backpedaling to the 13. Design return right. McBride lets the pursuit slide right by. Well, that's a heady play. That's a smart play by a senior. He let the pursuit go. Stopped on a dime and a good return of about 18 yards. It's scoreless so far in Boulder with 10.39 to play in the first 15. We're looking back on well, a game in October between these two teams. 1999, Oklahoma's number 24 in the nation at Folsom Field at the time. Mike Machetti, Javon Green hooking up. An 88-yard touchdown. Catch and run. And Machetti again trying to pull off the upset. He found his tight end Daniel Graham for a 14-yarder. He went down to the wire, and then Josh Heupel, well, he's picked off by Ben Kelly. That sealed the deal. Machetti, 382 yards, passing four touchdowns. The only time the Buffs have beat a Bob Stoops coach team. Oh, That's back in 99, 38-24. Machetti, Joel, carved up the, the uh, secondary of the Sooners like he had a machete in his hand. I mean, he was, he was on fire that day in 99. Interesting formation of the backfield. As Ellis is in front of Hugh Charles, gets it on a slight delay, goes out of an ankle tackle, but still only gets a couple of yards from the 32 to the 34. Dave, your key's coming into the game. Well, in, in a game like this, when you're a monumental underdog, turnovers are the big key. Uh, Colorado minus six on the year, giving it up ten times, only taking it away four. Can't do that today. They have to execute on first down, have to stay away from second and third and long. Then Bob Stoops and his coaching staff will concoct a crazy defense to have to deal with. And they have to be patient with the running game. Stay with the running game and not let Oklahoma get out of the gate and run the ball all over the field. Three wide receiver formation and uh -oh. a bad snap. Cody Hawkins did a good job just to get to it before Austin English came up with it. The left end, the sophomore oh. from Canadian Texas. He was all over it again. You know what happened, Joel? Between center and quarterback, Sanders didn't know the quarterback was in the shotgun. Sanders snapped it like the quarterback was underneath. Yeah, but don't he snapped you snapped it right up. Feel he snapped it right up, but he snapped it right up to his to his butt instead of right. shotgun snapping, and it makes a fortuitous bounce. I mean, that's the kind of mistake you can't have. You have to realize when the quarterback is under center and when he isn't. Man, that was just a lucky bounce for Colorado. Could have been a short field tragedy. David, he's got to have feelings. Yeah. I mean, he's usually goosed by the quarterback when he gets there. But you're up front thinking about your snap count, your assignments. Uh-oh. Hawkins in trouble. Found his man. Williams has the first down. The run after the catch when he peeled away from the safety. That's all Cody Hawkins. Cody Hawkins making his read very quickly, getting the ball out of his hand with anticipation and accuracy and throwing it to a spot, throwing it right to the spot that he has to throw it to, and he does have pressure. With only a four-man rush, he gets hit right in the smush, and he has to throw the football with people in his face and delivers a Steve Reich and allows his receiver to do something after the catch. Very nice execution, quarterback and wideout. So first down, it continues in Colorado territory from the 45. Take a spray, and then the running back takes a pop that time, Hugh Charles. And only a yard. You're only getting 1.3 per carry to begin with against Oklahoma so far this season. That's how tough it is on the ground, to yeah. run against this Oklahoma defense. First down marker all brought to you by Overstock.com.
Your entire order ships from just $2.95 at Overstock.com. Look better with Overstock.com. It is all about the O. And what it is for, for Oklahoma's defense, they all look to the sideline. It's a thinking man's game. Colorado comes out all kinds of formations. Look at this spread look. And they make you a little hesitant defensively. Charles again trying to bounce it outside. But the team's speed on defense. Reggie Smith is there to accept him to begin with. Then he gets help from the weak side backer Ryan Reynolds. The Oklahoma depth and overall team speed on defense as good as you'll find in the nation. Yeah, they can close on the football. But back to today's game. Colorado, every week they come up with a new formation, new personnel group, and they make the defense hesitate a little bit on your heels some and trying to take that speed away. Another thing you have to do is misdirection. Use Oklahoma's speed against them. A little misdirection, make them run one way over pursue and cut back the other. Third and ten for Hawkins in the offense of the Buffalo as a twist up front. Hawkins has time, and he's got a receiver. And it's Williams again, popped out of bounds, and short of the first down. And check that instead of Williams, Celestine, the young man, a true freshman, out of Louisiana. Well, he's short of the sticks. Big decisions for Coach Hawkins here. Not for me. And he, they got to punt it away and play field position. Without a doubt. You can't, you can't give a short field. Good reception to the football. And, and here, comes, uh, here comes Colorado with their decision. Well, Coach Dan Hawkins is saying, yeah, you know what their decision might be. Let's see if we can get him outside. Jump, make him jump a little bit. Without a doubt. And Bob Stoops and, and Brent Venable saying, hold your water, guys. They're going up to the huddle quick, up to the line of scrimmage quickly. And they're going. They're going to fake it. Off to one side. Oh. It's intercepted. No, dropped by Reggie Smith. He tried to dump it to his tight end. And it wasn't a bad idea. He could have popped it over Reggie Smith as he wanted to get it to Jake Barrington, back the fullback. Well, you go for a trick, or you go for an unexpected play, you have to execute. Cody Hawkins, not quite enough, for, enough hair under the football, and, and Reggie Smith makes an athletic move. Cody Hawkins puts a little more air under that ball. It's a first down, and, and Colorado's still moving the football. And Cody Hawkins knew it. He went to the sideline and said, Dad, you know what? Sorry, great call. I just didn't execute it well enough for you. That was a gutsy call, Dad. That was a, boy, what a gamble against the number four team of the nation. Adam Patrick, boy, takes a shot. Flipped on the hip. Brian, our Brandon Nicholas, who we talked about, the junior from Modern Day High School in Santa Ana, California. Well, what you have to do is be strong up the middle with those two defensive tackles. They're the catalyst, Nicholas and Hippolyte, and they keep linemen off of those linebackers. And last week, last year, in this very game, Brandon Nicholas, nine total tackles in that football game. That's a big number against Oklahoma's offensive line. Adam Patrick, the senior from Conway, South Carolina, stays as the center of the backfield. Put Grisham on his side, and he puts the ball on the ground, but, boy, what a break. Balls it's still down. And out. Let's see who's got it. It's a wrestling match. Oklahoma got it again, I think. Yeah, it may have gone back to the Sooners. What a break for Patrick to bounce right back to it. And it will be Oklahoma's ball. Well, you talk about a grease pig having a hard time hanging on to this football. And, and that was just an exchange problem between quarterback and running back. Never really, never really secured that football. You know, the handoff wasn't uh, wasn't sound enough. But man, I'll tell you, you talk about a fortuitous bounce. He hit it right in the grill. It made a high, he like he dribbled high, and he hit him right in the face mask, and he was able to secure it and went to the ground line. So now it's going to be third, a little more than eight. And Bradford, uh, talk about the poise and the patience of this redshirt freshman. Got him outnumbered over here. Yeah, there we go. Good but they get it off in there. time. Barely. And the black oh. blind side hit as he released it. What a shot on Sam Bradford. <laughs> The defensive back off the edge, Jarrell Brown. And Barrett there, too. Man, tell you what, that's just, that's big time pressure from the back side. And, and, you know, Sam Bradford doesn't have eyes in the back of his head. And, and the blitzer comes clean, Barrett and the blitzer both hit him. High, low, and man, that's just some great emotion right there. Colorado's ready to play some football. And they came with that backside blitz. Quarterback never saw it. Barrett had a nice rush. They both hit the quarterback. Chase McBride waiting once again for the Michael Cohn punt. And a real good one by Cohn. Hang time is there, and McBride cradles him. Back at about the 15. Good one so far. In Colorado, you can understand why they gambled. That's the kind of confidence right now that they have in their defensive unit.
Cody Hawkins and the Buffaloes get it back at their own 14-yard line. Third time they've had it, and they only they own the only first down so far in the contest. Well, that quarterback, Cody Hawkins, is averaging, uh, he's completing 80% of his passes. He's 4-5 for 53 yards. Bradford's 0 for 3. It's reversed. Cody Hawkins is at 80%, and Bradford, they can't hold on to the ball. They dropped it. Byron Ellis, nothing available up the middle for a couple as we head back to a Dr. Pepper game break. Mike Goldberg in the studio. What's the latest, Mike? <laughs> Oklahoma's got to get their business done first at Folsom Field as they come to the number four team in the nation. For the second and eight from the 16. Hawkins on a design work, right of that side with three receivers and over the top of Dusty Sprague. It looked like it was more designed for Sprague than Patrick Williams or Celestine downfield, but it landed between the two. Well, I like what Colorado's doing offensively. They line up, they motion, change the strength. You have to be sharp in the secondary. Uh, Colorado is stressing Oklahoma's defense mentally. You know, they're saying, we're not questioning the fact that you guys are physical specimens. We want to test you mentally. And so they're giving a lot of different window dressing, a lot of different looks, and that was a design change and launch point throw. They're really stressing Oklahoma's mindset this game. Jagoris in the backfield for the first time, along with Hugh Charles on the play fake. Hawkins trying to buy some time. It's going to be Charles going to make a miss. He does. He's got the first down to the 25. Once he got through the ankle tackle, he was finally brought down by the free safety, Nick Harris, but he had to bust one. Well, what you have here is Oklahoma deciding to rush four, and they drop seven into uh, into coverage. And, and double team the inside, uh, in, with uh, on the outside on English, we talked about he's got four quarterback sacks. You've got to put a lot of a lot of uh, attention to him, pay him some attention, and they did, and it allowed Cody Hawkins to dump down to his outlet receiver. Can they run the football though? To take some of the pressure off Hawkins. Hawkins throwing on first down and going for Scotty McKnight. Well over throw. Good coverage, Reggie Smith, and he'll be one of the candidates for an All-American position this year. The junior from Edmond, Oklahoma. Second team All-Big 12 last year. The exceptional return man. Honorable mention, Big 12 return man last year as well. And Brett Venables, you know, right now he's got him going in the right direction. Well, and, and what, what Brett Venables wants to see is they're getting consistent pressure with their front four. So you don't have to blitz to pressure Cody Hawkins. And you can do a lot of things in your secondary when you have seven guys back there. You can really shrink the, shrink the windows of opportunity. Second and ten. Well, the 25. Charles spinning for about three. Up to the 28 as we head downstairs to Jim Knox. Knoxie. All right, thank you, Joel. We just saw you, Charles, carry the football. The coaches have been working with them about taking the ball and getting up there, making the yardage. They say they dance too much in the past, but right now they feel comfortable about them. Last week had a breakout game over 100 yards against Miami of Ohio. He said it, the player he watched a lot growing up was Emmett Smith. He's trying to imitate his style of running, but right now looks like he's off to a decent start. Just take the ball and get it up there, guys. That's it. Make one cut. Get that upfield flip plan and get it up the field, Narcy. Exactly. One cut and go. Spread the defense. Looking towards the tight end to Gray. And it's first. Oh. Intercepted. Coming back the other way. Picked off. It's DJ Wolf, the safety. Wolf making a miss. He gets a couple of good blocks. Inside the 15 and cut by Columbus out of bounds. Right at the 11. So off the deflection. It should have been a catch by DeBray. Well, the ball was thrown a little high. It's, it's tipped airborne in every single practice you work on this. The tip drill. And Wolf does a heck of a job. Wolf, a former running back, he's played cornerback. Now they move him inside the safety. And he's really, really adapted to the safety position. And this football hits him in the hands. Got to secure the ball. And Wolf, now he's turning back into that running back that he once was. Look at him. He looks like a back in open field. He's got the vision, making the cuts. Tremendous play. Cody Hawkins, seventh interception of the season. Not really his fault, but it doesn't matter. Oklahoma has a short, short field, first and ten at the 11-yard line. And D.J. Wolf, a guy who transferred after his freshman season from right here at Colorado. He played for the Buffaloes for a year. So he sets it up at the 11 for the Sooners. 
High scoring elimination. Going to call a timeout. A stumbling start for them to begin with offensively. Oklahoma, 305 left in the first quarter. They're looking for their first first down of the game. Bob Stoops not a happy camper. Boy, what an emotional start for Colorado Keys for Oklahoma. Uh, Colorado is still feeding off the crowd. Oklahoma knew that, and a big key for Oklahoma is the AAA. Defensively, assignment, alignment, adjustment. Get lined up properly. And then they want to be balanced offensively. They want to be able to run the football and throw it. So Colorado gets on their heels a little bit, and Oklahoma's not one-dimensional. And also handles success. Deal with the attaboys. You're 4-0, attaboy. Now you're going to go to Colorado and play well. Give it off to DeMarco Murray. That didn't fool anybody. The gadget plays. They went trips on the right side in a bunch formation and brought Murray back the other way. Smart. Stayed at home. Colorado is coming downhill, Joel. This defensive football team is feeling a swagger. Look at them attack the gaps. There are some guys are getting double teamed, not being moved an inch. And when you double team one, other guys are left in single cover, uh, single one on one situations. And you got those guys winning, like Alonzo Barrett. He won his one on one matchup, tackle for loss. From the 13, a third down for Oklahoma. Round in the eye. Pocket holds up for Bradford. Middle of the field, touchdown, Iglesias. Well, his first completion today is his 15th touchdown pass of the season. 15 touchdowns, only two interceptions. That's what the coaching staff loves about Bradford. Cool, calm, collected. And, and, the, and the play was, was set up by the great play in the secondary by D.J. Wolf off the tip. And Iglesias pays Wolf off and says, you know what, if you're going to give us a short field, we're going we're gonna to make it happen. And that's a tough one because it's a third down touchdown. You hate to give up third down touchdowns. Glacier's great route, gets the foot down, plenty of room to spare. Possession, touchdown. Partly for the point after. And points off a turnover. DJ Wolf, the former Buffalo, who transferred after his freshman season. Colorado, Oklahoma set it up. The Iglesias, their odd receiver over the last two weeks with eight grabs each game. He's got a big one to start the day for the Sooners. Jim Knox on a magnificent day alongside the Rockies. Well, the highest scoring team in the nation held only seven points, and they had to struggle for that. It was set up in a short field, to say the least, only 11 yards. They needed to travel after a pick by D.J. Wolf. Well, Oklahoma travels well. You see red all over the stadium. Between 11 and 12 hours. Bus buster or no bus buster? Sooner Nation, yes. Yeah. They really Nation's travel everywhere. from Norman here to Boulder. Yep. Donato punts it away. Once again, it's going to be Reggie Smith. He's usually good for one big play per game. On returns. And a nice punt by Bellano. Smith back at the 18, calls for the fair catch early. And the balance has been there offensively for the Oklahoma Sooners. Is it going to continue? Yeah, it, it, it has been uh, pretty balanced for Oklahoma percentage-wise. And this is skewed Colorado. They rushed for 359 yards last week against Miami, Ohio against Arizona State and Florida State. They had five yards rushing on 51 attempts. They have to get that part of it going a little bit better. They have to be more balanced and, and be able to get that running game going and make Oklahoma respect that because they're already pressuring Cody Hawkins with just their four down linemen. Got to be able to run and take some pressure off of him. Finley, the tight ends, the motion man. They run to the same side. And waiting for the pursuit to slide by Alan Patrick by far his best run of the game he gets eight out to the 26. well this is a guy that lowers his shoulder pads and gets after you when you have a big boy like a low goal right here okay finish 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 lock him up finish 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 try to get him to the ground that's a nice job i mean you're driving people 10 15 yards off the plate load hold is a low man when, once he gets his hands on you it's like a big old bear's got his paws on you he's the tallest to ever play at oklahoma at 6 8 patrick it's Lunging over, right it's at it's the first down marker, maybe a measurement to the 28 as we head back to the studio. Mike Goldberg and a Dr. Pepper game break. Mike.
Thanks, Mike. Kentucky, one of the real success stories in college football this year, and thanks to Andre Woodson's performances. Howard Schnellenberger, of course, coached at Louisville, and he said they were on a collision course for a national championship when he was down there, and he, he, he's the one that got the Louisville-Kentucky uh, in-state matchup going again, and he's been trying to get Kentucky scheduled, but now they're playing so well, he's regretting that he did. That is the first first down of the game for the Sooners. Of course, they had the touchdown pass. The touchdown pass was from the 13. So, Colorado with three first downs. Oklahoma, surprisingly, has really struggled on the ground, as you mentioned. That has been the biggest mystery so far. There's been drops by Iglesias, also by DeMarco Murray. Right now, Joel, uh, Oklahoma has not run its A game. And Colorado's trying to capitalize. Little flanker screen, Iglesias getting it away. No, great pursuit down the line by Jordan Dyson. We shouldn't be shocked, though, should we? Yeah, that, that shows you something right there. That's a linebacker who, when they got him out of high school, he was a running back. So in, in space, I mean, watch, the, watch him take the proper angle. That's just, that's textbook. Get your helmet across the bow, across the body, and take him to the turf. I mean, this kid has got a motor. He's got a change of direction. He attacks the football. Averaging 13.8 tackles a game. He is coachable, a true team leader. Anchors away across the bow. Absolutely. Get, get your head in front. Change the play. Nothing doing. Doesn't make any difference anyway, does it? They pound the running back. Hit the lights there. So nothing there for Alan Patrick. Well, Alan Patrick last year, 110 yards, but it took him 35 lugs. I mean, you know, that's... Uh, that's not a very efficient yards per carry. Coming into today's game, Alan Patrick averaging nine yards per carry. Almost a, a first down every, t every time he touched the football in the run game. Not sniffing those kind of numbers today against the Buffaloes. One for three on their third down drives. Oklahoma looking at a third and seven. Bradford out of the gun with the blitz coming. Single coverage for Iglesias and overshoots it. Wheatley did a good job. Every step of the way, Terrence Wheatley, their big play guy out of the corner, a senior from Richardson, Texas. Well, Wheatley's got seven passes broken up, leads the conference, two interceptions, ties for the conference lead. He's got Walters under, underneath, but it, it, it's basically him on the perimeter. And he just fly papers Iglesias. Wheatley is a shutdown corner, runs in the, like, 4-3, 240 range. He's got it all going on. Ashley Ambrose, former NFLer for... 11 years he's been working with Wheatley uh, here at Colorado. He thinks he's going to have a big NFL career. Will it go after the punter? We're going to bring Iglesias over because the gunner shifted inside like he was going to go after it. Uh -oh. Bad snap. Cone barely got it away. Then tried to set it as it goes out of bounds outside of the 25. But the official said, no way am I buying it, Randy Crystal. Yeah. As he hit the deck. Yeah, he did. It, what he did was a great job of fielding the ball. It looked like a shortstop on the short hop. And it, it, on a bad snap like that, just to field it and get the ball away, he did a pretty good job. Nice hands right there. And get the ball out. Not bad. Point. Once the ball hit the turf like it did, he is wide open for attack. It'll be a first down for Colorado at the 31. Short side toss. Charles gets a kick out block and takes on a man for a couple of extra. Jim Knox had talked about it. taking on someone, getting the extra yard or two. He did that time. Got about five up to the 36. Mind the first down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% on brand name products. Live better with Overstock.com. It is all about the O. Surprise so far. Highest scoring team of the nation held to seven. And Colorado now with solid field position. Can they get the equalizer? And that's a big deal right there. Generating long five, short six yards on first down, staying on schedule. Stay on a second and third and long if you can. Cantrell and Sumler in the backfield. Sumler breaking through the right side. Redshirt freshman out of San Diego. Brought down by Ryan Reynolds. Let's take a look at uh, Colorado getting after it on the backside. Watch the lineman pull around and give a little bit of a lane. Lock down, pull the guard, pull back lead. Nice job. Reynolds does a good job coming off the block. 
Reynolds is a guy that loves the game of football because anybody that tears his ACL and LCL and rehabilitates after reconstruction on both and still wants to play, he loves the game. There's Maya Bach, a true freshman who provided the block. Now they need a yard. They're going to throw for it, surprisingly. Cody Hawkins, Charles is an animal. Gets the first down inside the 40. Some felt if Oklahoma's defense is susceptible, it's downfield in the secondary. Well, a perfect throw by Hawkins. He puts the ball in the right spots, right over the fingertips of Ryan Reynolds, the linebacker, inside of Nick Harris, the safety. He finds the hole, finds the window. Oh, just over Reynolds. And Nick Harris can't quite get there in time. Hawkins knows what he's looking at. He's got football IQ. And he delivered a perfect ball right there. Hugh Charles rewarded him with a nice catch. First down in Oklahoma territory at the Sooners 40. It'll be Charles following Ellis. They wanted it to go wide and cut it back into the congestion. And Curtis Lofton is there to wrap him up with a linebacker. It's a loss of about two yards. Colorado's gone two back set quite a bit today with Charles in the backfield with another member of the running back core like Byron Ellis on those particular two snaps. And in the two back set, they like to use Charles in space as receiver. And that's the kind of thing Coach Hawkins does. A lot of personnel groups, a lot of formation. Really keeps you on your toes defensively. And you got to line up, hit the right gaps, do all the right things. Really stresses you mentally. They run Robinson in motion and go the other way to Ellis in the flat. He's got it down to the 38. It's a gain of only four. Great pursuit. And catching up on the play, Marcus Walker, Curtis Lofton. Because it looked like with the misdirection, they may have been hurt. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. They can run. And they're not off their feet. You know, I don't care how good an athlete you are. If you get cut in half and you're on the ground, you're not helping anybody. But Bob Stoops and his coaching staff on the defensive side of the football puts them so well and they stay off the ground and they run to the football. I mean, in mass, that time there were four or five red and white uniforms there. Right start for Scotty McKnight on the bottom of your screen. Going to be third and about eight. Good pocket protection available. It's Patrick Williams for the first down. Pulled it up in front of Walker, the senior out of Waco, and they move the chains on a key third down conversion to the 26. Well, Oklahoma decides they want to try to blitz on this third and long. And they say, you know, let, let's let's bring an extra one. So they bring Reynolds and watch what happens. He gets taken down. That's a nice job by Ellis, who is the most complete back they have. Byron Ellis is a very, very strong blocker in blitz pickup. And he gives Cody Hawkins a, a lane, a vision unimpeded, and they complete the pass. Charles and Cantrell comprising the eye. From Colorado to the 26. Charles. Maybe a yard tripped up by Alonzo Dotson, senior from A Leaf, Texas, his nephew. Remember the name Dotson? Santana Dotson, Tampa Bay Buck. Good run with the Green Bay Packers. That's his nephew. Baylor, Baylor University guy. And, and you know, it, it, we talked about the two back set. They got the traditional one, Cantrell full back with tailback, but a lot today they've used two tailback types. And, and they've, used, they've used Byron Ellis in tandem with Hugh Charles. And it gives you a lot of versatility, a lot of flexibility. 7-0 lead for the Sooners. Right, the best drive so far for the Buffaloes. It'll be Charles. He's got a lane, and there he goes. Can he take it the distance? Touchdown, Colorado! gets out in space, he can run. Nobody ever questioned this guy's foot speed, and he shows it right there. Hugh Charles flashes that quickness inside the pylon for six. Everhart splits the uprights. And Charles with a 25-yarder. Well, Reynolds, is uh, he was cut blocked on, on a quick pickup. Let's take a look at what happens to him here. Lyman comes off to the next level, chops him on the old comeback block. It's all about the O. But it's all about right now. Is there an upset in the making? 
I know it's early. A little more than eight left in the half, but everybody thought Oklahoma would be cruising right along. Well, it's the start of the Big 12 conference season. They're to the defending champs, but it's also a different story when you come into Folsom Field. You know Colorado's defense is going to show up. Absolutely, and, and you know if you're the defending uh, Big 12 champion, you're going to get everybody's best shot. And you can talk about it until you're blue in the face. Until you get out and start competing again in conference on the road, you have to have that reference point. Now they got it. Colton kicks it away. It'll go to the far side to Iglesias, and he'll stay in the end zone. No, he won't. Yes, he will. When he make a mistake, he hasn't left the end zone, and he put a knee down. It's a touchdown. He was he very close. Yes, he was very close to hitting the goal line yep. and crossing uh, that imaginary plane. The ball, the ball, the ball does. The ball has to cross. Right. His foot can touch the goal line. The ball has to come out, and the ball never came out. He can step on the goal line. But the ball has to come out. Is the ball out? It's close. And the whole ball has to come out. Not just part of the football. The whole ball has to cross the plane of the goal line. The official is right there. Coach Hawkins is disputing it. This will probably get a look, uh, having a, a look taken at it. There's but, going to be a boot review, I believe. But the whole ball has to come out. And, and when you score a touchdown, just the tip of the ball has to cross the goal line. On the uh, When you're bringing it out, the whole football has to cross the goal line. Well, close to a sellout on homecoming weekend. Begged for a booth review. You can hear him in the background, and they got it. You have, it's, yeah, Colorado's challenging. Oh, it's going to be a yeah, challenge. Yeah, they're challenging. And you, you, the best, if you have the, the only angle that, that you have, to, if you have an angle that shows it right down the goal line, that's the only thing I think that might have them change their mind. The whole ball has to come out. The ball has to come out of there entirely, not just part of the football. But Coach Hawkins is saying, hey, you know what? This is big. We got to take a look at this. Again, when you're going in to score, the imaginary plane of the goal line that goes vertically, just the tip of the football has to cross the very tip of the plane of the goal line. When you're bringing it out of the end zone, the entire football has to pass the very front part of the tip of the plane of the goal line. Didn't take long, did it? No, Randy I, Crystal. Right. After video review, it's determined while the player did step on the goal line, there is no video evidence that indicates that the ball was outside the goal line. Exactly. So it's a touchback. It'll be first down. An early celebration now turns into boots. Yeah, well, the people thought that everybody thought the same thing in the, in the crowd. They saw him step on the goal line. That's not what, what constitutes coming out of the end zone. The entire football has to come out of the end zone, crossing the front of the goal line. And that didn't happen. And you can tell Iglesias knows the rule. Yeah, he knows the rule, but he is playing with fire. I mean, that's just like putting it in somebody's face. I mean, Iglesias took it to the nth degree right there. I mean, that that's he was playing with a firecracker and almost went off in his hand. 8.26 to play in the half. It is all even at seven. So the highest scoring team in the nation really struggling, especially on the ground. Alan Patrick in the eye. Will they be able to get it off? Dizon turns it in. He doesn't get credit for the tackle, but he busts up the play. He explodes it and turns it in for a gain of only two, almost three. I, I like Dizon. His contact ratio, Joel, that's how we used to evaluate linebackers. The number of snaps you're on the field uh, divided by the number of hits. You know, and, uh, and, and you get a percentage. And, and most linebackers that, that are worth their salt are in the high 30s, low 40s. I bet he averages over 50% of the snaps that he's in. He's making a play on the football. He has a nose for it. Will they put it up on a play fake? Bradford. Yep. He's got Finley. There goes the tight end. Inside the 40. Beautiful play fake. Throws the backer of the safety. And Joe John Finley. Kind of forgot the ball because Gresham has been so good for this team. But he's finally brought down by Benjamin Bernie. Yeah, and that's that's the uh, the matchup. It was the fake that got Bernie sucked up. And, and you got a you got a tight end, a big old tight end now that's running down the football field and, and, and running with quarterbacks. I mean, yeah, that's 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 pretty nice when you have a weapon like that that can run past the corner and, and in the end. I mean, their tight end group is as sound as yours in the game. Gresham, Eldridge, they can all play. First down inside the 35. Patrick trying to bend it outside. He's got a nice lane to run through. 
and will go the distance inside the 10. Touchdown, Oklahoma. So the Sooners didn't take long to answer, did they? No, that's a championship uh, mentality right there. We're going to try to take control of this football game right back. And boy, we talked about Finley. The tight ends were huge on this series. Finley makes the big catch on the play action, and Gresham has an unbelievable block on the edge for his running back. Watch Gresham at the top of the screen. Finley and Gresham, they double. Watch Gresham and Finley. Man, they double and come off. And Gresham sustains contact, 6'6", 260. Patrick says, thanks, boys. We'll catch up with you. Finley, 6'6", 265. Gresham, 6'6", 260. And they're tight ends. Hardly for the point after. Six from the foundation for a better life. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in our coverage on Fox College Sports. Six oh one to play in the half, and welcome back to Boulder. Joel Myers, Dave Lapham, and Jim Knox. The Oklahoma Sooners have trailed for all of about eight minutes the entire season. Oh. And as Tulsa. When they got an early lead, they're the only team that had a lead on, on Oklahoma. What happened the rest of the race? Oklahoma just grinds on you. It wears you down. They've got it first and ten deep in their own territory. The dump off Patrick making a miss in the open space. Boy, what a nifty move he put on the defensive back on that side. Lionel Harris. I fell for him. They have 61 plus points a game. And notice when we look at the leaders in scoring this year, three of the top five are in the Big 12. And uh, just about 50 points for Tech, just under it. Kansas and Oklahoma, over half a hundred. Pretty strong offensive performances in non conference play. And yeah, there's so many teams this year averaging better than 36 a game, 29 in fact. I know it's early. Breaking it outside to Marco Murray. Boy, what a talent he is. Out to the 40-yard line again of 11. Harris got to him. Murray, a redshirt freshman out of Las Vegas. All-round exceptional athlete. In fact, All-State in football. And Dave also led his high school basketball team to a state title. And I'll tell you another talent. Lode Holt and Robinson eclipsed the sun over there on that left side and just drove people off the line of scrimmage and ended up knocking them backwards and down. I mean, 6'5", 330, 6'8", 350 next to each other. How do you see? It's good looking. Kid Murray gets it again. Runs into his offensive <laughs> Duke. Duke Robinson. Said, Duke I'll escort you. Did I get in your way? I'm sorry. The yeah. junior left guard from Atlanta. <laughs> Duke, Duke got hit right in the midsection. Murray said, I'm lowering my pad. Duke, get that pad level down. He hit it right in the bread basket. Duke's honorable mention all through 12 last year. Not for plays like that, though. It'll be second and nine for the 41. Tell you a guy that is a big timer. We're just looking at him, Jordan Dyson. And he is just, he loves the game of football and he wants to be accountable and he plays every snap like it's his last. Murray is a single. Dump it off. It's complete to his fullback, Pleasant. And Pleasant close to a first down. Wow, now, so yeah, he got the first down. He didn't hear a whistle. I give him credit. He's right across the 50 because he didn't hear the whistle. Ian Pleasant, the senior from Alexandria, Virginia, never quit on the play, and he's got it. And another guy didn't quit his load hole. The big man, the big load is out there, fighting and scratching. It's like a rugby scrum. Okay, full back, get up inside. Now keep those legs churning. Get after it, get after it, get after it. And here comes Lodeholm. Lodeholm says, I'll push the whole pot. And he, he peels some people off this full back and says, go get that first down. Saying Lodeholm. You like him. He's such a big guy. He has got some nice feet on him. He played a competitive level of basketball himself. First down. Murray. Ooh. Taking people with him across the 46, down to the 45. Brody Eldridge just did an unbelievable job blocking at the tight end position. He'll play a little fullback, play a little tight end. Might be the best blocker on this football team at 6'4", 260. Big old number 83 in the white jersey, Brody Eldridge. I'm telling you, they might have one of the best. I'm thinking USC and Oklahoma might have the two best offensive lines in college football. They have the best tight end group There's Oklahoma. Maybe the best secondary. They are just loaded with talent and depth. One of the biggest, we know that, in the history of Sooner football. That's saying a lot. Murray on the misdirection. Dies on it. Lasso him around the ankles at the 43. Otherwise, he's going to pick up the first down. He's checking the sideline with Jim Knox. Knox, All right. Joel, I'll tell you what, right now they are in field goal range for Garrett Hartley. The five field goal carrier 
of Oklahoma before the game today. Look at this, 70 yards out, no problem. Plenty of distance. If it comes down to that, they want to see if they hit it right before half, or who knows, if it's a close game, maybe towards the end, they'll give them a shot. He was one of the three finalists for the Luke Rose Award last season, one of the best in the nation. In this rarefied air, he has the range, but you have to have good snap, good hold, and protect them. Richard freshman Davis changing the play. Third down. And take all five, too much time. Delay of game. Yep. Didn't, get a, didn't get the change made quickly enough. Substitution practice. Ooh. Three five. Had 12 players on the field. Well, you know, in the beginning of, the, of this drive, Colorado had 13 players in the field, ran two off as Oklahoma ran on the football field from the sideline. At that time, they were trying to do the same thing. They were trying to match up with what Oklahoma does personnel-wise, bringing in the big tight ends. Now they get Gresham and, and Eldridge in there. And, and Colorado's trying to match up personnel-wise, and they, they get caught with an extra man on the football field before the snap of the football. So they convert on the third down. Didn't even miss snap, did they? Colorado can't afford to do that against a team. A quality opponent like Oklahoma. Bradford finds the other tight end we were talking about, Gresham. He's got the receiving so far. He's the guy with the catches at the tight end position. He's got three touchdowns. Yes. 13 catches, three of them for touchdowns. Guys on finally got him. He is one big target at 6'6", 260 yards, uh, 60 pounds. But he can, he can flop. I mean, they, they, they move him around, Joel. They'll put, put him in the slot. They'll flex him. They use him a lot of times as a wide receiver by position, even with that size. And they, and they do the same thing at the personnel group with DeMarco Murray. They can move him around. Both tight ends on the field right now. They go in that direction, short side, and it closed in a hurry. It looked like it was going to be a nice hole available. Brown and Patrick just down to the 13. He got about four. Guys on this. Unbelievable the way he explodes to the play. He has a master's degree in football geometry. He takes the perfect angle every time. No wasted movement, no wasted steps. He makes instantaneous recognition and flies to the football. You saw the way Oklahoma with Bradford looking for the big guys you've been talking about, getting the tight ends involved much more this year than they were last year. Well, here they all are. All three of the tight ends are on the right side of the formation. 47 and 6. This motion went out. Patrick trying to bounce out. Nice stiff arm by Alan Patrick, but the other man coming up out of the secondary got to him. And a good play by Jeff Smart, in fact, the linebacker. Brad Jones got stiff arm. He got hit right in the smush. I mean, he's trying to come off of the block by the by the big tight end Gresham. He's fighting off the block. Alan Patrick, as he's going by, just stiff arms him right in the face. And Smart is a real heartwarming story. A kid who grew up here in Boulder, high school born in Boulder, and he just got a scholarship over the last couple of weeks. A former walk-on who's made an impact. Really has. R.J. Brown has had multiple concussions. Six here at Colorado, three in high school. They're wondering if he's going to play anymore. But just Smart. Three tackles for losses, forced to fumble, recovered the fumble, just marks made an impact. Huge third down for the Colorado defense. Man. And it was a delay of game for Bradford. Delay. Offense. He has floated a couple of times with it. And they've been coaches. We have a timeout yes. that was requested by the coach on the sideline. They're looking at the clock, and they can do that. They can request the timeout before it expires. <laughs> Hard to believe Bob Stoops, and I looked at the numbers, and unbelievable numbers, overwhelming what he's done. But it's still surprising, it's already his ninth year. Dan Hawkins has gambled in this game, and it didn't burn him the first time. No, it didn't at all. The defense came through for him. Yeah, as you said, Joel, you have to have confidence that your defense, and at that time they were. 14, first 14 snaps for Oklahoma netted them 27 yards. And he went for that fourth and short. Cody Hawkins just tried to shot put it and he aimed it instead of threw it. And it didn't work out. Spread the defense now. Trips. Iglesias cutting. Emmanuel Johnson over to the near side. Murray the other way. One to a back to Murray's side. Gets the block from the tie in. Now can DeMarco Murray break more tackles. No! Nice. Out of the secondary, Daniel Dodd's got him. But you try to get that guy as he got 
What about the footwork of DeMarco Murray? Uh, he, he is incredible. Wow. Man, Brandon Nicholas hustling as well. I mean, that's just a that's just a well-defended play by everybody, but uh, DeMarco Murray, man, that's a nice run as they've ever seen for, for very little game, very little advantage. Watch Brandon Nicholas stay after. He, boy, the big fella's trying to get something done. And that was very, very close to happening for DeMarco Murray. If he got one more block, he would have come all the way back. It was a, it was supposed to be an alley screen up the right side. Like he would have taken it inside the pylon to the left side. And Finley gave him a nice block. He got out there a little bit late, but he got enough yeah. for the man yeah. so that Murray could break away from it. It was so. good recognition by Colorado's defense. I mean, everybody played well on that snap. Colorado's defense played just a little bit better. Well, Hartley is going to have the field goal attempt. Time out of peace left. With still 53 seconds on the board. Bob Stoops, the Sooners, since he took over, have they been money when it comes to facing teams with the Big 12 North like Colorado? 25 and 3 against the Big 12 North. That's home and road. They don't discriminate. It's going to be a 28 yard attempt with Garrett Hartley. A 10 point lead for the Sooners. He's got it. So the Sooners, with 48 takes left on the clock in the half, lead it by 10, 17 to 7. Across the 30 and barely pulled down at about the 40. That was close to going the distance. He does have some explosiveness. He is sudden. Runs like a 4 3 2 40. He's already taken one kickoff back this year, 68 yards. He almost split him and took this one to the house. Very decisive. That's what you have to be as a kickoff return guy. Once you find a lane, hit it full speed. Wheatley did, and it almost paid off big for Colorado. All Big 12 defensive back last year, first team at uh, the quarterback position. Picking up right where he left off. Seven passes broken up and two interceptions coming into this game, leading the conference in both areas. One timeout left for Colorado. Hawkins with pocket protection. He's going to run. And he's going to go down. <laughs> what a pop by Ryan Reynolds. And Cody Hawkins, one thing he is, put a big C on his chest. He's competitive. Tough kid. Yeah. He said, you know what? Let me show my team something. It's a 10-point game right now. Last year's game was a 10-point game at the half in Oklahoma State as well. A couple of first downs away from the field goal try if they don't run out of time. And this play is taking too long. Hawkins throws it away to avoid the loss of three or four yards. Yeah, when you're out of pocket, you can throw it away without being intentionally grounding as long as you get it past the line of scrimmage. And he did a little backhand shovel pass out of bounds. You don't want to take the loss. Look at those numbers. The, the interception is the big number. And, and it wasn't the, his fault. It, that absolutely was not his fault. And, and, and DJ Wolf did a good job on the, on the tip drill. His tight end let him down, let the ball split his hands. He deflected it airborne, and DJ Wolf said, I'll take it. And Oklahoma was looking for takeaways on the road. Well, they should use the middle of the field. There was a five-yard penalty walked off there. I didn't quite catch what the infraction was against Oklahoma's defense. Still third down and close to five. Dave, you, you can use the middle of the field. You need 78 seconds, and you've got a timeout left. Clock will stop if they get the first down. And then you get the field goal you have done. Two to each side for Cody Hawkins. Only a three-man rush for the Sooners and a short toss for a first down to DeVray, who holds on this time. And I think they're going to use their final timeout right here. Once they put it on, yes, they will. They'll use their final timeout. They had to. Yeah. Because once they place it and spot it, the clock starts. Well, and when you rush three and drop eight, and you have eight athletes run like Oklahoma has, there's no place to put the ball down the football field. And Cody Hawkins doesn't have a, a super strong throwing arm anyway, and those windows get very, very small. Well, Oklahoma started it all off scoring-wise off of Beck. Yeah, and it was a, it was a, a catchable football tight end, didn't DJ Wolf did, and it led to this touchdown by Iglesias. That's the first completion of the day for Bradford was his 15th touchdown, and then Hugh Charles gets in space, and he is a great runner in space. He has speed. Patrick, his tight ends, secure the edge for him. He makes Walker the safety miss, and he's off to the house. So there have been some big plays, but overall, 
Both defenses, I think, have been the story in this football game for the most part. And Oklahoma with 174 yards of total offense. If you double that, I think Colorado would say holding that team right. to 348. Yep. So Hawkins on a low snap out of the gun. What kind of arm? The tip throw. And it batted away. Yep. That will be down. the final play as Wolf knocked it down. Yep. The man who came up with the interception. We'll go to the locker room on homecoming weekend and Oklahoma trying to play the role of the spoiler, at least for homecoming purposes. The prohibitive favorite is up by 10 at the break. I want to starting to impose their will they started to grind and wear down Colorado in the second quarter and there was only one turnover in the football game Joel in the first half and it was a costly one as Oklahoma took advantage tight ends gonna catch the football Dutton tip drill DJ Wool says I'm gonna take it back short field 11 yard line third down touchdown to Glacius first completion for Bradford and they put the tight ends in and the tight ends get involved and they make the lane for Alan Patrick he scores now, Colorado's not done. Colorado's going to get after a little bit themselves, and Hugh Charles did a good job. But that turnover is, is big. Look at third downs. Colorado's uh, converting 50%. Oklahoma converting only 20% on third down. But that turnover in short field was the difference, basically, in the first half for Oklahoma. Looking at some of the first half numbers, well, almost dead even offensively. And the one that stands out, though, as you talked about it, Third down conversion. Nobody's done that against Oklahoma this year. In fact, Oklahoma holding their opponents coming in today to just 20%. In fact, deep is going to be Iglesias along with DeMarco Murray. Cole kicks it and it's in another bounce. A good field position to start the second half for Oklahoma. They're in a possession and drive chart to start things off in the first half. A look now at what the Sooners did. Well, in the first 14 plays, Oklahoma generated only 27 yards. So, you see right here, they had issues. Short field off the interception. 11-yard touchdown. And then, of course, they answer. When Colorado tied it up, they go 80 yards in three plays. They go on another drive. So the last 14 plays, they went for 152 yards. Their first 14 plays, they went for 27. A little bit of a difference here. Try to spread the defense. Come, come, come. We saw it. Jumbo looks from Oklahoma in the second quarter. It got it going for them. Now they're going to have Kelly and Iglesias on the same side, running the other way. And then Patrick tripped up at the line. Off balance all the way to the 38th for a gain of three. And eventually, the Oklahoma Sooners, the, well, there's the offensive here's, playmakers. Here's the playmakers. Remember, Bradford's first two passes of the game were dropped. They still go 7 for 11, 101 yards in touchdowns. That's that's poise, that's composure. Now when Patrick Adams is over five yards of catch, Glacius with two catches, one of them the 11-yard touchdown reception that was long. Very quiet first half, though, for the wide receivers. Not for Kelly in particular. Finley dropped it. Three drops. He knew that Wheatley was going to hit him as soon as he got it, and he took his eye off the ball. And a look back at your original keys coming in. Yeah, Oklahoma, the first thing was alignment, assignment, adjustment. They've been pretty good on that. I mean, a couple of big plays that Colorado got was because Oklahoma wasn't quite lined up properly. They've been uh, fairly balanced in their attack. You know, I, I think Colorado's defense is for real. Handling success. I think they came out a little bit flat. You know, I mean, the first 14 plays of the game, they had some drops. They, weren't, they didn't win the rate game in the beginning. Bradford nifty footwork to get away. And it's a low thrown behind his intended target. Just trying to hit Iglesias, but the heat did the trick. Chappelle Brown. Yeah, and Brandon Nicholas uh, also, also involved. And, and they get after it. I mean, Colorado defensively at the line of scrimmage, and they're attacking. And, and look, look at the pursuit from the inside out. It, it, it's tough to throw a right-handed quarterback moving to your left with coverage, not quite leave Iglesias enough, three and out for Oklahoma to start. First five minutes of this third quarter are critical. Ooh. Nice snap brought down by Cohn. The end over ender to Chase McBride. Past the 25, and a good return. 
taking it across the 30. Iglesias on his back out to about the 33. Now the drive chart. Possession to the first half for the Buffaloes. First of all, the snapper for Oklahoma's having problems. He short hopped one, then almost snapped it over the punter's head there. Here you take a look at, uh, at, at Colorado. Uh, this, they went for it on fourth and less than a yard. Didn't work out. Interception. Those two drives really hurt him. This was a nice drive in response to tie the game. 7-7. Their longest drive sequence of the half. Seven plays for 22 yards. On the delay, Hugh Charles nailed, trying to get it up the middle. Good play by Curtis Lofton. Otherwise, it's going to be big yardage. The middle linebacker doesn't get him. Look at, uh, at Colorado's playmakers in the first half. Nice job by Cody Hawkins. The interception wasn't his deal. And he's going to catch the football. Charles gave him a nice little uh, weapon at the running back position. He busted his touchdown run, got into some space. Patrick Williams averaging over 11 yards on his reception. So pretty nice balance there for Colorado offensively as well. It'll be second and close to nine. Colorado had two three and outs in the first half. Can't afford that to start the second half, trailing by 10. Charles buried right away. Well, right on the edge, English played off his block. Reynolds came over. It was a group effort. Now, Keys for the Buffaloes once again. Well, they came into the game minus six. Now they're minus seven because they, they uh, had the interception and no takeaways. So that's a negative. First down, it, not getting it done. Too many second and third and longs. Run game, it, not quite enough. 2.7 for a rush. But they knew they were going to be in a real battle with Oklahoma's defensive football team. They have to do a better job on first and second down and not face those third and not eight or more. And they got a third and ten to start the second half. Pick up English, pinch him inside, buys time for Hawkins, but it's uh -oh. picked off again. There goes D.J. Wolf for the second half grab of the game. He's bumped out of bounds with about the 20. D.J. Wolf did transfer, by the way, from Colorado to Oklahoma. And we were told that before the game. But it was in high school. When he was it in high wasn't school. in college. Well, Chigoris should have caught this football. This ball goes off the fullback's hands. One went off the tight end's hands. This one went off the fullback's hands. And Jagoris can't make the play on it. Tips it, gets it airborne. DJ Wolf on the tip drill again says, thank you. Now, again, I was a running back at one time before I moved to cornerback and now safety. And I'm going to get yards after interception, which is yeah, yeah, instead of yeah. Well, but he first... gives him another short field. One was the 11-yard line. This one's the 22. It was back at the 11. Got a 13-yard touchdown pass after they lost a couple of yards. He's tied at the 17. My bad, 17. Alan Patrick is the single. Bradford changing the play. But it'll be Patrick busting it up the middle, breaking tackles. He's in. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Did they capitalize or what? I mean, they make when you make mistakes, Joel. They make you pay. They make you pay for those mistakes. And you, you just can't do it. You can't turn the football over against Oklahoma. And, and turnovers on the road are, are real big for the visiting team. They're game changers. And DJ Wolf has made a couple of game changers. This time, instead of losing yardage, they just said, let's get after Colorado. Let's still establish ourselves at the line of scrimmage and let our guy who runs people over, Alan Patrick, take it to the house. Hartley for the point after. So 14 of the 24 points for the Zooners. Short fields, direct result of turnovers. Patrick, the 17 yard touchdown run after TJ Wolf set it all up. It's getting away from Colorado early in the second half. We'll come back after a word from Dr. Pepper, your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Your home field. Well, get you down and possibly out early and get you away from what your your script was. Yeah, but you can't you can't at this point in the game, Joel, with 12, you know, 12 minutes to go in the third quarter, you can't let your game plan come flying out the window. You still have to stay balanced. If you make it one-dimensional now, you're playing right into Oklahoma's hands, and it could get very ugly. You still have to try to do both. You still have to try to run this ball some anchor that active defense. Line drive, Wheatley showing good hands just inside the goal line. Whitley takes a shot across the 25, out to the 27. So D.J. Wolf, his second pick of the game, set it all up. Yeah, he's been Johnny on the spot. And, you know, you, you run to the football, good things happen. He was running the football, trying to stay involved with the play. The ball's tipped right into his possession in short field. And Alan Patrick says, I'm running through you. 
and I'm scoring. I mean, a one-play drive after the takeaway. Takeaway, touchdown. That's a one-two punch. That's a punch to the gut, followed by a right cross to the chin. Will Colorado be able to recover, show some resiliency and rebound? Let's see. Dimitri is somewhere. Drew Fred Redshirt freshman from San Diego. The old uni high, they call now Cathedral Catholic. Has the man on his back, Baker, and a strong side backer, and Carrollton touches. And it's a gain of about two up to the 29. First down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. With the convenience of shopping at home, you can save up to 70% on amazing deals from Overstock.com. It's all about the O. You know what the toughest thing to do, Joel, is don't let one bad play linger and make one bad play too. Colorado let that happen. The interception was a bad play, no doubt. You can't let it linger and give up a touchdown on one play. You can't let one bad play turn it to two, three, or more. Center changing blocking assignments. You can see that. And a bad snap at that. Hawkins adjusts, and he's got a first down. Josh Smith, a true freshman. More Park, California, on the San Fernando Valley. What an ad-lib by Hawkins. Well, he, he remained calm, and, you know, he kept his composure. The play, uh-oh, going to take my eyes off coverage, but I know where I want to go with the football. Let me pick this thing up and get there. And he threw it to the most explosive receiver in the receiver group, Josh Smith. Six feet, 180 pounds, can really stretch the football field. So first down, up to the 45. They needed to sustain anything at this point. Keep the Oklahoma offense off the field. Here comes uh -oh. Blitz. Smith gets him. Reggie Smith flies with the collar. Got him high. They got him low, too, but Smith was the first. Yeah, they, they blitzed him. They put Lindy Holmes over the top in coverage on the on the wide receiver, Josh Smith. And that brought that brought uh, Smith on, on, a, on a blitz. And he just comes off the edge and detonates the quarterback. I mean, Cody saw him at the last second, and all he could do at that point in time is, is protect the football, secure the ball. Reggie Smith was running untouched, unabated, to the quarterback. Only two sacks so far compared to six last week against the Willow throwing team. Tulsa likes to put it up in the air. Hawkins uh -oh. and almost picked again. Real breakdown for Cody Hawkins. Lenny Holmes should have had it. He was looking in the direction of Celestine. That wasn't even close, though. No, he and Celestine kind of looking at each other after the play. It seemed like Celestine was nowhere near where Cody Hawkins thought that he may be based on what unfolded coverage-wise. And now the challenge for Coach Hawkins to say, look, guys, played a great half. Don't let one sequence of a turnover short field touchdown diminish what we're doing here let's pick it back up and stay after three wide receivers in the formation on third and 18. Hawkins in trouble again and a short one Scotty McNaught doesn't have a catch 23 coming into the game which is third best among freshmen in the country but it's been that kind of day well, well both teams Joel have taken the primary guys out McKnight's been taken out and, and also taken out of Oklahoma's deal is Malcolm Kelly so other guys have to step up, you know, and you can take one guy out of it, but Oklahoma has more weapons to go to than Colorado does. And it's starting to show during the course of this football game. Reggie Smith, the man who put Colorado in a hole, waits for the punt from Delano. Another good one by Matt. Smith gets the block after he broke the initial one. And what an ankle tackle. Otherwise, he is gone. Daniel Dykes, the safety on the special teams coverage. It's out to the 32 and the Sooners in the driver's seat early in the third. Something. Bet Joel, I get all excited because I know good stuff's coming. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da. Well, will Colorado be able to get some good stuff going? And that's going to be the difficult prospect now. 
Oklahoma is so good defensively and especially against the run. Yeah. You wonder if Colorado can even run the football. They didn't run it well against Arizona State or Florida State. So what leads you to believe they can run it against Oklahoma? We'll find out because they don't want to abandon completely. Hugh Douglas, short side of the field. Maybe two. From the 27 to the 29. 51 times they were able to rush the ball against Arizona State and Florida State. And they had only a net of five yards. Affleck! Our Affleck trivia. Last player to return a punt for a touchdown against Oklahoma. Ooh, ooh. Not that difficult. Wasn't that long ago. <laughs> if I can get it, which I did in the production <laughs> meeting yesterday, I know everybody at home can get it. Very, very if you want it, if you want a clue, he aspires to be a mogul. <laughs> He's a mogul. Now. That's right. Seven and a half to play in the third. Hawkins on second and long. Good pocket protection that time in the dump off of Byron Ellis. But a pursuit again, the overall team speed of the Oklahoma defense. In the first half, Joel, Colorado ran the ball 17 times for 47 yards. Charles had 52 yards on 12 carries. And of course, that 25 yard touchdown run was the, was the big hit. But now that, that Colorado finds themselves down by such a dramatic count, 24 to 7, can you stay with that running game? You're going to have to, though, or it could get nasty trying to throw the football. It'll be a timeout call by Colorado. We got third and a long three, almost four. And we gave you a long time to figure this one out. It's called the game of beat the <laughs> clock now. <laughs> Our athletic trivia. And it wasn't that difficult. In fact, he was in an NFL camp till the very end. He was the Eagles. last cuts yep. this year for the Eagles. Yep. Why did you give it away before oh. it came up? Oh, my bad. I, can't I thought we were showing it. it. I thought we were giving it to him. Oh, here it is. Here's the, here's it. The, 2002. He, he returned. <laughs> he returned quite a few, quite a few uh, punts against people for touchdowns. He was a spectacular open field runner, Jeremy Clue. And you know what? Being a mogul skier, you have to make quick decisions, just like a punt returner. You know, Great the, mental, the mental part of it, you have to make, you have to the vision, look ahead, make quick decisions, balance, all that good stuff. There's similarities there. Flag back comes. to back time. Time out. Oklahoma. Well, it was first time out There's a flag from the back judge. He put it back into his pocket, but they've called the timeout. So both teams with a valuable second half timeout. Much more so right now for Colorado. Oh, man. How about these guys? This is a great story. Nick Harris, George Hippolyte. There's only 11 in the nation that have been selected for the Good Works team. That is such an honor. And for it's a, it's a real good story for Nick Harris in particular. Here's a young man. When he was born, his dad was 17, his mom was 16 and kind of bounced a little bit around okay, within the family. His grandparents, and then finally his stepmother took over by the time he was eight. She became his legal guardian, LaFondra Harrell, became his legal guardian when he was 15. She knew she had something very special in Nick Harris. And the dump off gets first down as Hugh Charles is knocked out of bounds. But back to Nick Harris' rule to wrap things up. We're all the lucky ones now because he has given so much time to the community of Norman, Oklahoma. Right. To be around a quality person like Nick Harris, we're the fortunate ones. Well, uh, uh, the measure of a man, Nick Harris, him light, I mean, the measure of a man is what he gives back. And these guys are all giving back to their community. And it's not just the university community, it's the entire community outside of the university and inside. And these guys get it. Nice story for both, for Hippolyte. Equally successful right here in Boulder. Ooh. Big run by Ellis. They finally get something going. Will it be back-to-back -back first downs? Notice the football right at the mark for a game of about 10. Lindy Holmes got him out of the secondary. Looked to me like Oklahoma was a man short at the point of attack. We, we talked about the AAA. I'm not sure they got lined up quite well enough, or Reynolds just didn't get over the top when he was supposed to scrape. And he got blocked by, by Hugh Charles pretty darn well. And he got taken to the turf. But that's a pretty nice crease right there. And, you know, it's the opposite of what you expect. You'd expect Ellis to block for Charles. That time, Charles did a good job for Ellis. The delay for Charles gets out of the, well, it's a hold in the back here. So it's going to come back. But he got away. They're throwing the flag. And the true freshman. Yeah, Ryan, Ryan Miller. Miller. Yeah, freshman yeah. out of Little Tilly. He's a big boy. 6'7. Offense. Number 73. 10 yards. Previous spot. Number 73. 
First down. Now this is a true freshman, so he's 18 years old, maybe 19, 6'7", 320 pounds. He's got a bright future. Still growing. Yeah, he's a, he's a massive young man and, and a very, very highly recruited athlete. Colorado got him. They were happy that they got him. They've got a couple of true freshmen mixing it up in the offensive line today. That bodes well for the future. Well, they've got 51 out there right now as well. He's a true freshman yep. from Hawaii, Kai Maya. Yep. And he has played very well so far today. He's got a low center of gravity, tremendous balance, a very physical kid. So first and 20. Underneath they go. Just settling in and trying to get the 10 back. The completion. Good to Sumler for about eight, almost nine. We talked to Dan Hawkins yesterday about playing some of these young players like the two freshmen. You have to be mentally ready, you have to be physically ready, and you have to be emotionally ready. And you never know how that puzzle is going to come together. And if a guy has all those three things and he's ready to go, play him. If he doesn't, for one reason or another, don't, don't throw him to the Lions. Uh, despite what his physical stature may be. Over the middle, it's a first down. That was the best throw of the game, maybe. Josh Smith on the receiving end. That was a bullet yep. from Cody Hawkins. Had a little mustard on that one, and I agree with Coach Hawkins' philosophy totally. And, and you know what? Offensive linemen, besides quarterback, it's the toughest position to play at a young age because of all the things you have to learn up front. But here, dropping the pocket, able to step up, transfers, wait and throw a strike. And that was just an outstanding throw. Reggie Smith is all Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year in preseason polls. And that, that completion was against him. And Cody Hawkins threw it in there. Very, very nice. Hugh Douglas, or Charles rather, getting outside, breaking the tackle. She got away from Reggie Smith, and that's a rarity. When you beat Reggie Smith in the wall. And he, by getting past Reggie, he got a good yard. Maybe three more, all the way through six, almost seven. And, and this is where a lot of people in the Colorado program think Hugh Charles excels, is in space. Get him to the edges. Get him the football to the, in the edges, throwing him the football. And uh, I, I tell you, you can't question the kid's speed. He's, he's made some nice plays for Colorado in this football game. That was his 15th carry. He's got 51 yards and a touchdown run. 25 yarder. New back in there. It's somewhere. Got him from San Diego. Another redshirt freshman. Guy whose father won an NAIA basketball title, Washburn, in 1986. So he's from an athletic family. And he's also a very successful high school player. In fact, all time leading rusher in the San Diego area. He left there with almost 6,000 yards. You know, you, uh, if you're a sophomore on this Colorado team, you're, you're an old guy. I mean, they're playing a bunch of freshmen, uh, redshirt freshmen. This, this bodes well for the future. There's no doubt about it. And you pay a little bit with some growing pains along the way, but these guys are, are maturing quickly. They're, they're playing the best in the country. Cody Hawkins throwing on uh -oh. third. It's deflected again and almost third. On third, about three. I, I think the guy that got his hand on it might have, might have been Alan Davis. And that's the Harris got his bucker up there. Well, and when you've got a quarterback, Dave, that's only 5'11", the launch point's instrumental and creating lanes for him to throw. Yeah, and, and uh, it is it is Davis that gets it, that gets his hand up there. Big Allen Davis, the defensive end, got, got the inside pressure and got his hand up and knocked that ball airborne. Pretty good effort by the big. If you're not going to sack the quarterback, get your hand up and make it tough for him to throw. Big field goal try, Everhart, 41-yard attempt, and it is dead on for a guy that's had his problems from outside of the 40. That's his first outside of the 40 this year. It was 0 for 2 and just 3 for 6, so that is a pick me up to get within now two scores. 4-10 to play in the third. Long drive for Colorado results in 3 as they trail 24-10. Settled for the 41-yard field goal. Now, the 28, Alan Patrick waited for it to develop. And powers his way out to the 35. He was patient on that play, waiting for the blocks. Yeah, and here's where you say, okay, big boys, this is where we're going to let you get after it at the line of scrimmage and, and, and pound a little bit. Watch a man low hold in the left half of the position. Come out. A double to the push, push, push. Stay after a little bit. 
get after things. And, and look at look at that offensive lineman Simmons down the football field, seven eight yards, sustaining his block. That's that's good effort. It'll be second and about three. Uh -oh. And it's available for Iglesias and intercepted. Did he hold on? Yes, Ryan Walters with the pick. Big effort right there. Just a little bit too much on the football from Sam Bradford. He had Iglesias available to him. He went to Iglesias for his first completion of the day, which was a touchdown. But we've seen three interceptions now off of tip balls. This would have been a spectacular catch for Iglesias. I mean, he, he sold, sold out, laid out, didn't really lay out. He got one hand up on it. Ashley, got to get two hands on that right. football. You have an opportunity to make a catch. Don't nonchalant it with one hand. Get after it with two. Tips it for Ryan Walters, and Walters makes him pay. Iglesias took a little bit too much for granted there. If you can get one hand on it without even having to lunge, get two hands up there and catch the football. He let his quarterback down. Colorado gets it in the first turnover of the game with the Sooners at their own 38. Good field position. Byron Ellis slams his way across the 40. Out to the 43 for a game of five. So that is Bradford's third interception on the season. He now has 15 touchdown passes and three interceptions. And one of the interceptions was off a tip ball. That interception was off a tip ball. And the one that he threw at Tulsa was off of a bad read. So he's, uh, he's paid the price three times. I think he only has to burden, shoulder the burden of responsibility once. I think his receivers you know, off these tip balls have let him down a couple of times. Colorado credit, you can say Oklahoma's a little off, but they're hanging with the number 14 in the nation. Charles waits for the pursuit to go by and barely pulled down. And again, Curtis Lofton saved a big play. You hear the hue, that's not bullying, that's hue. Hugh Charles has become a fan favorite here. And you know, Joel, we talked about the resiliency. Would Colorado be able to withstand the storm of, of you know, Oklahoma taking a 17-point lead? Well, they're chipping away, they're staying after it. And, and this is a football team that's showing some good signs of, of mental and physical toughness. And Coach Hawk has to like that. That was a nice block down flip by Dusty Spray, the wide receiver. Staying after him. From inside the 47, a first down in Oklahoma Territory. Ellis finds a huge hole to the left side. Another first down to the 35. That's just good vision right there. He immediately, the play was designed, point of attack is to the right side of the offensive line. Nice job by the left side of the offensive line for Colorado. Sanders at center, doing a good job. It, 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 you gotta create a cutback lane. Watch the cutback lane that is created. Watch the guys do a job on the backside. Double team and then rub. You don't even have to really get a block at the linebacker level if you get movement on the down lineman. At that point in time, it's impossible for Lofton to, to cover that big of a gap. There's down at the 35 of the Sooners. Interesting look on the formation. Here Wells bouncing out. He breaks the tackle inside the 25. Pulled down at the 13. Give him the 12. Lofton caught him from behind. DJ Wolf, Joel missed him in space. DJ Wolf has had two big interceptions off of tip balls, but here he's unblocked and, and, and he's missed. I mean, Hugh Charles can make you miss. He has got good foot speed, and I'll tell you, he is lowering his shoulder pads and getting everything he can out of his runs now. I am shocked. Shocked that they're peeling off this much yardage with the running game. It's down to the 12. Nine touchdowns and 16 red zone opportunities as we speak. Summer is taking over in the eye. Ah, moving the right guard. You can't lean forward like that. And, 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 and fake the start of the play. Devin Head lurch forward. Oh, start. Can't do it. Another young guy, a sophomore, out of Corona, California. Here, yeah, right, right here. Watch, watch him just kind of start to start to lean forward a little bit. You can't do that. You can't. Once you're in that three-point stance, you're yeah, he's pointing out. Hey, you can't do that. So that, that cost a fight. And when you're in the red zone, you do not want to have a pre-snap penalty. And Coach Hawk is saying, man, we can't, we can't shoot ourselves to put like that. Oklahoma's tough enough in this. We can't get back five yards. Well, they've got four plays on this drive. All runs, 50 yards. Summer looks for a block. Wraps it inside the 15 and down to the 14. You got a flag. Yeah, a late flag. It's get, they're getting after it now. Curtis Lofton was involved on the far side, and he went after the true freshman 
by Alba. Yeah, my Alba lost his helmet. Yeah, the young man from Hawaii, and this is going to be, I believe, per wish we could grow a hair like that. It's okay. a personal foul. After the play, personal foul, number 40. Noxie, did you take a shot on that yeah. play? Yeah, I tell you what, it wasn't me, but the suit, they actually grabbed his hair. That's the personal foul right there. You got hair like that, it helps you in more ways than one. Man. They grabbed his hair, Noxie, what's up? You know what it's there, Dave? You wish you could only grab, have hair like that. I, I put mine in a bun. I wouldn't let anybody grab my hair. I put it in a bun, man. So first and goal of the seven. Trying to make a real game of it now. Draw within seven. In the eye, Sumler. It'll be Sumler going He's low. Down, and crawls his way inside the box. 10, 215 pound redshirt freshman. Okay, Oklahoma took care and took advantage of two short fields off of interceptions. 11 yard line, 17 yard line. Colorado didn't have a big short field, but they got possession of the football on their interception takeaway. Will they score a touchdown? Will they capitalize? Will they finalize? If that's the case, the difference in the football game is one of those interceptions that Oklahoma took back inside the red zone. Can they get it in? They can't be on the wide receiver. It'd be a 62-yard drive. Points off a turnover. Counter play. Sumler tied up at the backfield. And a big-time play by DeMarcus Granger to slow him down. He got penetration. Yeah, with the right guard and fullback of the counter. Tried hard, Joel. Oklahoma was tough inside. So they shut him down inside the four, and that's going to be the place for the first snap of the fourth and final 15 minutes of regulation. And we've got a good one going. Got a good, big one. Real good one going. 24 10, Sooners on top by 14. You're watching Big 12 Football presented by Kia Zera on FSN. doesn't work out on third down, depending on where the ball is, does Dan Hawkins go for it on fourth down or kick the field goal? David Buster's game summary. The ground game has been crucial for Colorado. Bullet into the end zone. Oh. Almost picked off by Lofton. Tried to thread a low throw in to his wide receiver spray. Well, here you see a little bit, little motion, little crossing action. And Runs a little pivot route, but that's just Lofton has that underneath uh, underneath zone coverage area. He made a nice drop in Red Hawkins' eyes and almost turned, almost picked it off. Big deal, Coach Hawk going for it here on fourth down. Down two touchdowns with virtually a quarter of football left. Thinking that this is a great opportunity, got to finalize on this drive. Three wide receivers and Gray in the slot, the tight end on fourth and goal from the four. He's got the tight end. Touchdown to Gray! <laughs> nice throw by DeVray. Nice throw by Hawkins. DeVray finds himself between linebacker and safety, and Reynolds uh, and DJ Wolf collide. Touchdown. Boy, and after by Eberhardt, and did he take a shot as he caught it? And, and, and Reynolds took a shot too from DJ Wolf. Man, oh man, it's getting physical, Joel. It's a brand new game in Boulder. It's points off turnover, don't forget. It's off the Ryan Walters interception. That's right. And because of Glacius nonchalant, and got a one hand on the football and the tip, Walters took advantage of it. It'll be a Glacius off the cup kick from the three. Over to the right, making a miss. A Glacius. They've got him cornered, but still a good return. Out across the 32 to the 33. And another look. And the tight end knew he was going to take a shot to Bray. Yeah, to Bray, a game time decision, suffering from a little bit of a concussion problem, but you wouldn't know it on this rep. 
Ryan Reynolds and DJ Wolf. Not a tight enough relationship between safety and linebacker. Reynolds got popped. He tried to deliver a pop to DeVray. Looks like that right shoulder's gonna be bothering him. And then Reynolds got crushed by DJ Wolf. So it's uh, some problems for Reynolds. Reynolds has had a long day, but he's been cut block, and beaten up, and keeps getting up. Is that a cramp? Hopefully it's just a cramp. Working his it's boy. The reserve tailback on special teams play. Looks like looks like just a little bit of a cramping action going on there, hopefully. Back downstairs, Jim Knox. Hey, Joel on the Colorado sidelines. He's to say momentum's on their side. Jeff Grimes, offensive line coach, got his offensive team down, down on the bench and said, I told you the defensive line would tire. They're just pounding the football. Also, DeVray, keep in mind, eight receptions. Four of those went for touchdowns. He's put them close. They keep it on the ground to Patrick, and they're waiting for him. The linebacker on the outside, Brad Jones, just stood there and waited. The strong side backer. Yeah, they're feeding off the energy of the crowd now, and feeding off the energy of the defense is feeding off the energy of the offense. It's it's amazing. Momentum is a huge emotion, and right now all the momentum is squarely on the shoulders of Colorado. When they tied the game up 7-7, they generated momentum, and Oklahoma took it right back by going 80 yards and three snaps. What will they do on this drive to answer after Colorado has now reestablished momentum? Second, a little more than nine. They run Eldridge out of the backfield. Roll the quarterback for one of the few times today, and Bradford out of the edge. He's got a lot of room for a first down and takes a shot. As he takes a lick from Walters, the free safety, but slid down in time with the first down and a gain of 12. Yeah, he saw a lot of green on the edge. And uh, Bradford says, you know, if you're going to give me that much real estate, I, I can't turn this down. A little naked bootleg. And he gets out there all by his lonesome. And now he says, you know, i got to tuck this and go. I mean, if I throw it, I don't think I'm going to pick up this number of yards. And so he moves the chains and, and lives, for another, lives for another day. And nice little elbow by Walters to let uh, Bradford know for sure that Walters is around. And the 45. Try Patrick again. It's not been easy going over the left side. Jeff Smart was there, the middle linebacker, but still got close to four on the carry. Now the first down marker is brought to you by Overstock.com. Live better with savings up to 70%. Amazing deals from Overstock.com. It's all about the O. And right now it's all about the O for Oklahoma and the D for Colorado, who will win out on this particular drive. Oklahoma wants to score some kind of points, make it a two-score game again. Colorado wants to get the ball back to their offense. It's on a little bit of a roll. They just created a turnover. Patrick again bending into the boundary. Only a half yard of the most. Ran out of racing room. That's good pursuit by Colorado. They Lucas had, got over the big guy on the edge. They had five defenders in the in the vicinity. Thanks. Also, Maurice Lucas dies on. All three collaborated. How big is this third down? It's massive. Well, so far, Oklahoma on their third down price today. Do you believe this? 52% first four games of the year, one of seven so far today. And, and that speaks to what Colorado's done in the last three games, only allowing 20% conversion rate. They're playing well on third down again. Italy in motion, the tight end. Bradford out of the gun. Uh oh. Bring the blitz. They get to him. Jordan dies out with a sack. And that's a mismatch. You get Jordan Dives on working against DeMarco Murray. And Finley, oh, Colorado overloaded. Finley blocked the outside. Dives on came inside. And it's no match for DeMarco Murray. And this is all about a game of mismatches. And in this case, that is a mismatch when he comes and, and he has to work against a running back. DeMarco Murray, there was confusion. The tackle never fed. The they tackle never him. slid. DeMarco... I think he thought the tackle was taking him. The tackle thought the back was taking him. Nobody took dives on. That's the Jack Links in the trenches deal today. Cole punts it away to McBride. He'll call for the fair catch. Uh -oh. And gets hit on the play with the flag. He got nicked on the way by. Gresham brushed him. And Gresham tried to avoid him, but couldn't do it. Could not get that big six foot six inch turn of 60 pound body to be like a Maserati in space. <laughs> You know, it's more of a 16-wheeler out there. 18-wheeler, bunch of wheels. <laughs> Absolutely killed. He was wheeling and couldn't turn. Ella discuss it. And how big a mark off is it going to be? Kick catch interference. Number 16. 15 yard penalty. 
First down. Yeah, I think it was 18. Big ones. Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't 16, it was 18. And, and, and there's Gresham. Whoop. That's a big boy. Couldn't quite get out of the way. He's got about a foot on McBride. <laughs> Dwarfed him. We'll come back after this word from Dr. Pepper. That's, that's fine. That's great first down production. And Devin Head, the right guard, and it made a nice block. As you see him pull from the right guard position, watch him come around. Little kick out, fullback gets his block. That's the power play. A little counter power deal with the fullback hammered up in there. And they just obliterated Oklahoma up the gut. That'll be the 16th first down of the game. Charles bouncing around into the secondary as Reggie Smith bumps him out. Now they're running at will. Yeah. And they've outrushed for the game the Oklahoma Sooners. Well, Hugh, Hugh Charles now has over 100 yards. He has over 100 yards rushing now. And, and right now, Oklahoma, it, it, they're starting to just get up the football field and give up gaps. And, and Colorado's taking advantage of it. O Colorado, on their sideline, their coaching staff thinks that Oklahoma's defensive front is getting tired. And that Colorado is starting to wear them down physically. It's a 24-17 ball game. Charles trying to get the pursuit to slide by. Nifty move to cut inside. Clipped on the hip by Smith to be put down at the 37, but still a gain of about five for Hugh Charles. Hugh Charles is saying, I can't pass this opportunity up. I'm a senior. I, I don't get a chance to play Oklahoma anymore. And this uh, five foot eight inch, 190 pounder is doing everything he can to make sure that Colorado takes advantage of this opportunity. And, and it's boiled down to now, Joel, Colorado State has made one more mistake in terms of turnovers than Oklahoma has. That's why Oklahoma has a seven point lead. Here comes Colorado, about to try to answer again. Wing back now is Ellis in front of Charles. Run Robinson in motion. Deception doesn't pay off. It'll now be third to about four. Only a yard for Charles. So they tried all the decoys they could on that play. But Oklahoma stayed at home. Well, Colorado is playing keep away. Colorado has run a ton more snaps than Oklahoma. Colorado has played ball control. And Dan Hawkins is, he's liking what he's seeing out there. Not liking everything, obviously. Don't want to see the turnovers and the short fields. But he, he likes the fight this football team. He, he likes the balance that, that Mark Helfrich, the offensive coordinator, is injecting into the play calling of this football team. There's a lot of good things happening for the Buffalo. It's third and four. They need one more good thing right here. They pick up the blitz. And low and a little bit wide to Charles. That's a tough one because he's short of the first down even if it makes the catch. So now you've got to, got to decide another decision for Coach Hawk. Short field uh, on, on, on the minus side of things. It's fourth down. Do I go for it again? This would be the, 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 the not completed their offense. He would have made it fourth and less, but still fourth down. He's going again. Uh, he, he did it. Fourth and one early. And Cody Hawkins didn't get enough air into the football. That one didn't pan out. Did it in the red zone for the last touchdown that they scored. What about a gadget play? We haven't seen one yet. See a little Boise State action when he was at Boise State. He was proud of those guys in the Fiesta Bowl. It's fourth at about four. Hawkins out of the gun. Will they give him enough time? He can run for it, potentially. Oh, oh for it. he's got it. Patrick Williams, wow. first down. He threaded that puppy, didn't he? Down to the 27. I'll tell you what. Cody Hawkins, his record since youth football is 60 wins and two defeats. This kid thinks that he can't lose. And, and you see it. That's his attitude. That's his demeanor. And, and when the going gets tough, your players have to step up and make great plays. And, and his, his mechanics are askew because he has to step up toward the line of scrimmage, and he still delivers a perfect strike and, and lets Patrick Williams run after the catch. Great play by Hawkins and Patrick Williams. First down, Colorado. Sumner behind Ellis. Oh, right behind the right tackle. Sumler weaving his way. Very little, maybe two, up to the 25. Well, the one key for Cody Hawkins all year, he, sh he spreads it around. Yep. He's got nine guys that have caught balls today. On the season, 16. there were 16. Yep. Yep. So you better be ready, because he doesn't play favorites. Remember, you're right. You know, Joe, it, it's a great point. And you do you do Lakers basketball. He's like a tremendous point guard. Good distributes point. the football. And, and he says, I got a bunch of playmakers. I love all my guys. And I'm going to spray it all over the field and get them all involved. 24-17 Oklahoma. Drive continues. It started back at the 36 for Colorado, aided by a 15-yard penalty. Hawkins out of the gun again. 
Now Sumler beats the man in the backfield. Almost makes a miss in the secondary. DJ Wolf with a big play in open space. Otherwise, he's got a touchdown. Yeah, Corey Bennett could not finalize. He got some, uh, got some, oh, no, it wasn't Corey Bennett. It was Stephen Coleman. He got some penetration, but could not finalize and make a play in the backfield. Looks like hands on hips, huffing and puffing a little bit. You see that, that, that Oklahoma is getting a little bit fatigued, but that's a, that's a nice job making the down lineman miss and still bouncing to the outside. Look at the, uh, look at the yards in the half. I Absolute mean, shock, Dave. It, it's amazing. They've more than tripled. Oklahoma in the second half yardage line. Third and a little less than three. Somewhere in the eye. Trying the left side. Nothing there. It'll be fourth and three. So another decision. It's a lot shorter if you want to go for a field goal here with 7-10 to play. Yeah, I, I'm thinking that, you know, he, he may go that route. He may go that route. Now, what you have to, if you're Oklahoma, you have to watch for the fake. But I think he's going to, is he going to go for it on fourth down again, or is he going to kick it? He's kicking it. You got a hard on the field, and it's going to be a 37-yard attempt. You have to watch for the fake. And, and they have their base defense. Oklahoma did not substitute. They don't have their field goal block unit. They have their base defense on the field watching for the fake. McKnight, the holder, it's up. And he, oh. and he drew too much. Yeah. He hooked it. He pulled it. Eberhard missed it. Gosh. It is his fourth miss of the year. So he is now four of eight on the season. Coach Hawk says, I should have got for it. Son of a gun. I mean, hindsight's always 20-20, but good snap, good hold. He just, he overcooked it. You know, he just overswung, overcompensated. Looked like me on the tee box when I hit that duck hook. And Coach Hawk saying, oh, come on now. That went over the upright, didn't it? Didn't that go over the upright, go over the goal post? No. Did not. Wide left and an easy call right off his foot. Yep. So Oklahoma gets it back. Can they hang on to the football? Run out most of the clock now with a long time consuming drive on the ground. Raptors going to throw on first down. And he's got Iglesias popped uh -oh. into the air. Intercepted. Dykes on a dual possession. Who do they give it to? It's a wrestling match. And would it go to Oklahoma? No. Colorado. Daniel Dykes the safety. I'll tell you, the, the line judge, Kelly Dietering, came in and took complete control of it. He said, you have to give possession. Initially, went to Daniel Dykes, and he came up with the football. The ball was tipped once again. Glacius, ag again, tips the ball airborne. Bradford trying to make something happen down the football field. Iglesias gets it airborne, and, and that is, that's, that's possession. Defense has it, has it secured. And, and Dykes comes away with the football. Will they review this? Is it simultaneous possession? But my opinion, if Iglesias tips it and Dykes takes control of it, you have to give it to Dykes. His whole body's around the football. Yeah, he had two, and then Iglesias got the second in on it. They're going to take a look at it. They're going to review it again. Yep. Simultaneous possession goes to the offense, but I don't think that was simultaneous. I think Dykes had control of it initially after the deflection. How can you say the offense had control when he deflected it in the beginning? I like the fact, though, they want to get it right. Yep. Yep. So they'll go to the booth, take a few looks. We'll aid in that uh, project. 6.28 left in regulation. So he is not ready. So two here, hands. Who has Dykes possession? with two. Dykes has possession. Iglesias tipped it. Dykes has possession with two hands. Iglesias tries to get a second one in there. I think Iglesias lost possession and tried to recontrol. After video him. review, interception is confirmed. Yes. First down. Now the mistakes are even. Two apiece. Will Colorado take advantage of this short field? They get the ball at the 43-yard line. Oklahoma has had two red zone opportunities once again. The 11-yard line, 17-yard line, touchdown, touchdown. Colorado, now, what will they do with this short field? They scored off their one first interception. Will they score on this one to tie yeah. the game up? Day 14 of their last 18 snaps have been runs. That's amazing against a Sooner defense that's fifth in the nation in total defense. They wrap up Ellis in a hurry. And overall, with that snap now, there's been 36 offensive plays for Colorado to just 16 in the second half for the Sooners. Well, basically, Colorado is beating Oklahoma at its own game in the second half. They're running the ball. They're controlling the clock. 
They're controlling field position. I mean, Colorado has been the dominant football team in this point in time. Fans fired up. Inside of six. You see some of the comparisons what Oklahoma has done. And Colorado is coming up with so far. Sumler banging bodies and actually put down by his own men. Oh, that's he, it really didn't appear to be a sooner who knocked him down, but he was like a little pinball in there. That's the same play that they ran that he broke for big yards. And it's the counter up the middle, pull the right guard, lead with the fullback, and Oklahoma squeezed it better that time. And as a result, there was no lane for him to gash, and he, and he got taken to the turf on the contact. So Oklahoma did a much better job of uh, gap control integrity and squeezing the hole. And they convert on third and 10 from the 43. 8 of 17 on third down so far. Smith on the bottom of the screen was available early, not late. Back to the middle of the field. It's Dusty Sprague. First down. All right, it's coming back. There's a penalty flag. I think there's going to be a hold that will nullify it. It is. Hold on Colorado as Hawkins came out of pocket. But boy, that's just a great move by Hawkins, keeping the play alive, creating a play by getting out of pocket, buying time. All for naught as one of his offensive linemen reached out and grabbed Coach Hawk can't believe it. But I'll tell you what, Coach, you have a son that is one competitive, smart football player out there. He's, he's playing as hard as he can for you. And there's father-son right there, talking it over. And, and now it's going to be third and tough. You might have to think about fourth down. This becomes four-down territory, possibly. Did they call that? Backs out on Columbus. Is that the grab that they called? Do they call this one? Kind of stretch the clock there. What are, they, what are they calling? But at any rate, a, a nice job by Hawkins, buying time and creating opportunity, all for naught. Third and 20. Trailing by seven. Bring the blitz that time. Yep. He'll step up through it. Oh, he's got him. Wide open his break. Knocked away at the last second. What a play by Harris. He closed on that ball, Joel. He outran the football. And, and basically, Cody Hawkins with not quite enough arm strength to get it there to beat the speed of Nick Harris. Boy, Nick Harris took a shot. He's, he's slow to get up, but he's, he's working his way off the football field. But again, Cody just buying time. Look at Harris come after that football. And, and, and he went after it. He closed on it. He said, this is mine. And you almost have to reverse roles. I mean, Sprague did a good job of almost taking it away from Harris as Harris became almost like the primary receiver. Sprague had to become the defensive back. Delano wants to make sure Smith does not return it. He almost bobbled the snap. Hangs up a very high one. Effective one. Oh, and Smith fumbles oh. it away. Did Colorado come up with it? I believe they've got it. They do. Unreal. Third turnover of the day for Oklahoma. And Colorado has two. They are now plus one. Now, you talk about a short field, 16-yard line for Colorado. Justin Drescher comes up with a football. He can't believe it either. Smith lets it go right between his arms. Long snapper. And, and man, it's that's just, that's good effort staying after it. Diving, coming up with the football is, is Drescher. But boy, man, it, it's just that that's an unforced error. Basically, there's no contact. And Colorado's saying, we gotta take advantage of this one. And they talked about a defense is gonna be tired and stressed. They just had a big stand. They're chasing Hawkins all over the field. They're tired. Talk about a short field inside the 16, first and 10. Charles trying to make a miss, gets a late block, but a flag comes down. Well, they're gonna call a hold on the outside on Edwin Harris and the big offensive tackle. They're going to call him for grabbing out the edge, and he can't believe it. He's, he's dismayed by it, but he did grab. Number 32. First down. And they called it on the fullback. Yeah, can't tell. But Edwin, by his reaction, and what I saw, I thought he might have gotten home, could have gotten called as well. At any rate, again, Colorado self-destructed with holding penalties. He can't, he can't do that at, at, at key times. Here's the, here's the hook, and that's what they see. They see the hook on the shoulder pad and taking them to the ground. And, and that, that's call. the call that was made. Yeah, he's already by him, so he had to put him down. Yeah. He definitely got the left arm in there and hooked him to the turf. Back of the 25. It'll be first and 20. On a play fake. Out in the flat. 
complete to Charles. Ooh, and man. what a shot from Harris again. Jeez. Big stick. Charles isn't a big guy. No. Naked bootleg. Cody Hawkins. And that's what contact's like in the Big 12. And if you want to play running back, catch the football on the sideline and have safeties coming, running at you full speed. And, and, and this is a safety built like a linebacker at 6'3", 232 pounds. In fact, in nickel defense, he is a linebacker. He can lay the wood. Second, a little more than 14, almost 15. Short side toss, Charles. Breaking tackles out of the backfield. Did a good job just to lose a yard on the play. Yeah. And a late flag now. Yeah. That came from the referee. Did they get him around the grill? They're, they're up by the headgear. Face mask. Yep. Defense, number 40, five yards. Got 15, five yards, five. so it's not an automatic. And it wasn't now. a dead ball foul, so it'll be second down over. And they'll be uh, back on schedule about second and ten. But Lofton, as he's trying to make the play, he hits him up high and then grabs. Here it is. He grabs kind of at the face mask and the helmet area, and he gets called for the face mask. Not the uh, personal foul, flagrant, intentional, but he got he got penalized five yards nonetheless. So now the holding penalty is kind of offset a little bit by that, you know, five, they get five yards, five yards of it back. They do get the down again, as you described, Joel. So now they're second and nine, they're back on schedule. Instead of first and 20, I'd much rather be second and nine against this Oklahoma defense. And this is basically the ball game for Colorado. They've only got 4-11 to play. This is their shot. Somewhere, and Ellis setting up behind the left tackle, Columbus. And will they give it up? No. Wide open spray. Touchdown, Colorado! Incredible! Broken coverage. Marcus Walker lost track of spray. Made a mental error at a very, very key time. Oklahoma in the secondary had problems last week against Tulsa, giving up over 350 yards passing. And Dan Hawkins' group made a big play against Oklahoma at a critical time. Extra point ties it up. Eberhardt came through that time. It is all even with 4.05 to play. Dusty, take a break. You deserve it. Now, how do the Sooners respond? That's key. How did the defending Big 12 champions respond to a mental breakdown? Walker can't get there. Spray ties the game up. What about maybe the biggest upset so far this year in college football? Oh, I don't know. I think Michigan should get knocked off. Week, uh, in week one, was a two and ten team pretty good. last year, Colorado. As Cope kicks it away over to the near side, it's going to be a short one for Iglesias. He'll take it at the 11. Makes a good move, breaks a tackle, cross the 30, pulled down from behind. And that was an awkward one as Cope, the place kicker, got him at the 33. And a smooth move brought to you by Keystone Light. Sprague's route. Yeah, it's just his own defense, and, and, and all, he, all he did was run a little corner route, and it was broken coverage. Oklahoma made a mental mistake in the secondary at the most inopportune time. They say that Sam Bradford is poised, cool, calm, collected, unflappable. We'll see. This is the biggest drive of his career right now. Alan Patrick is the single. Oklahoma has been outscored since the 223 mark. Of the second half, 17 to nothing. Patrick, short side. And dies on waited. Got him after a short gain of three across the 35 to the 36. Good job by Colorado. Everybody staying on their feet and turning everything back inside. And, and you look at Bradford. Bradford had two interceptions in his first four games. He's got two this afternoon. So it's at the Big 12, there's less margin for error on the road, particularly. And you have to admire Colorado. They gave the ball up two times, short field Oklahoma took advantage. All they did was respond and take it away three times. In the last one, Reggie Smith on a punt return gave the football away. Bradford just eight for 17 with the two picks you're talking about. And now setting up great pocket protection. Ton of time and a low throw. Iglesias, did he make the catch? I think he did. Yes. Yeah, he did. Yeah. 
Good cradle. He went down to get her to the 49 for a first down. He did, Joey. He went down there and got his hands and arms underneath the football. And it was good patience by Sam Bradford to let this play develop, to let the route develop. And he goes down and gets his arms underneath the football. And, and will this one be looked at? The fans, of course, are saying that the ground helped the Glacius secure the football. Bradford had to throw it low and inside to give his receiver, Glacius, an opportunity to make a play on it. Well, this, and we're well, going to go upstairs. At, yeah, and, and Coach Hawkins is saying that was not a catch. That ball was trapped. He needs to get a little more demonstrative about it. <laughs> <laughs> and Colorado did, did not have to challenge. This is just going upstairs. Oh, they are challenging. He is challenging. Now, he lost his challenge in the first half on the uh, on the, the Glacius. Did he take the ball out of the end zone on the kickoff return? And he lost the timeout. Now, you don't want to lose a timeout here. If they lose this challenge, he has two left. You don't want to score a timeout. Left. They both used a timeout early in the second half. If he loses one, he'd have one remaining. I'm saying he's got two right now. If he doesn't right. win this challenge, he loses the timeout. And you don't want to lose a timeout with three minutes and ten seconds to go in, in a game like this. Now, let's see if, if we can make a determination. Is there enough visual evidence to overrule the reception? Two officials on the field collectively said catch and they and they they were both pretty pretty quick in their decision making process now will, will that will that hold up or will the visual evidence overturn it and is it it has to be indisputable is the key right, right. otherwise the play stands as called it's like i said i, I saw two officials signal reception it wasn't one and it didn't seem to be like, oh, not sure. They both signaled catch fairly quickly. So, I don't know. Maybe they saw something from their angle that, you know, absolutely convinced them. But, you know, there have been some drop balls. Bradford should have a higher completion percentage. But bear in mind, he came into this football game completing 78%. And he had 14 touchdowns and only two interceptions. Today, he's less than 50, or right at 50% now. But he's got one touchdown pass and two interceptions, so he, he doubled his interception total in one football game. First time this year he's looked like a freshman. Now that, you know, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not sure that I see anything that would necessarily overrule the call on the field because Iglesias' body, you know, is... He does have his hands under the ball, but does he separate his arms and does the ball hit the ground? Does the ground assist him in making that reception and, and they're taking a long time to decide the longer the longer they take normally the more question obviously there there is about the call that was made on the field after, after video review the play is being reversed they're reversing it from the 36. so coach hawk keeps his timeout it does not lose the timeout still two on the board for both oklahoma and colorado and it Huge third down now for the Sooners. Absolutely, and Bob Stoops can't believe it. He said, yes, I'm, I, I'm kind of surprised that one could overturn. But the longer that it went, it, it, it usually, if they're if they're real sure about it, you know, they, they say, okay, well, the call's going to stand. But on that one, the longer that it took, the more time that they took, I, it, they, they did feel like the Glacier separated his hands from underneath the football, and the ground did help him secure that football. The Sooners are only one for eight. Hard to believe on their third down attempts. Patrick is the single. Finley's the motion man, the tight end. And now the linesman comes in oh. to stop the play late. Did Colorado, somebody call timeout? Oklahoma, Oklahoma from the bench. Yep. They call timeout. They only have two. Now there's Time one out. left. Oklahoma. They burned one of theirs. They only have one remaining themselves. So you want to be a coach, do you, in the Big 12? Whew. The game could be so cruel. Crabtree had 14 catches over 230 yards and three touchdowns, and that one would have given him 15 catches, tying the school record for about 250 yards and four touchdowns, but could not quite secure. He put his team in position all day long to win the game, and when it was crunch time, couldn't quite make the play. The football game can be cruel at times. Third and a long seven. Bradford with time. Nice. And his tight end, Finley can't oh, hang on. Oh, he knocked it out, yep. Separated by Wheatley. What great hit by Wheatley. That's just, everybody executed well. The protection was good, quarterback threw the ball well, receiver got his hands on it, but Wheatley made the big hit. He was in great coverage and separated the football. Now, this is against the big tight end, Finley. And Wheatley says, I don't care how big you are. 
I'm going in there and I'm going to stone you. I'm going to stun you. But how about the read? He leaves Iglesias when he sees the ball he reads in the, air. the quarterback. Yeah. When he sees the ball in the air, he comes off his coverage, and Wheatley makes a big time play by a big time player. He's going to be all Big 12 first team like he was last year. Michael Cohn on the low snap. Wobbles a returnable out for Chase McBride. What can he do with it? He's got some blocks. He's got a lot of blocks, in fact, across the 50, and it was the putter, Cone, who brought him down right of the midfield strike. Man, that was a good tackle by Cone, and Iglesias is just complaining about being held. Iglesias thought he was held covering the punt, but there was no call. And, man, you talk about establishing field position. Outstanding punt return. Making a great decision and getting up the football field. The Glacius felt like he was held and, and, and no call was made. But look at look at him just weaving his way through traffic. And that's a pretty darn good tackle in space by the punter Cole. And, and this is a fearless punt returner. I mean, you, you just have to you have to throw regard for your own safety away and, and, and get up the football field and, and take a chance. You're gonna get smacked and chase McBride. Outstanding effort. They get into the midfield stripe, a couple of first downs away for the long field goal try. Robinson, the motion man. They get to Charles, and he loses a yard. Back at the 49, wrapped up real quickly on that play. And it was an outstanding play on that side. You know, you know what? It was Granger again. You know, you know what you like out of, uh, out of Colorado today? Coach Hawkins said, Colorado, he feels like we're emotionally ready to take part in this football game. We feel like as a team, we expect to compete and win in these games instead of hoping and praying. So when we went to Georgia, we weren't ready emotionally to compete. We, were, we thought we were surprised we were in the game. Today, they feel like they could win this football game. Passing situation on second and 11. Good pocket protection. Hawkins has him. It's complete. And a first down to the 35. Celestine. Another true freshman. John Kidman. He gets everything that there is to get out of his ability. Cody Hawkins, he's got pressure coming in his face, a bull rush, an offensive lineman coming right back in his face. Unimp un unimpressed. I mean, he just fires the football, man. He's got a lot of courage. Well, now they can put the ball back on the ground if they like, and they will with Charles running at the back of his own blocker, but bounces it outside. And he's lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Inside the 35. Well, you know, he's the size of Doug Flutie. Right. He's got the guts of Flutie, but he doesn't have the wheels. Flutie could really run. Yeah, he could really run. Flutie had a pretty strong arm, Joel. Flutie could throw right. some strikes. Absolutely he, right. he, he could fire the football. Dusty Sprague had a nice block to, to, uh, to try to help uh, Charles, who was in trouble. And, and Sprague, watch Sprague. Whoop, kill back, pick one off. Now make it one-on-one -on -one in space, and, and the tackle is made by Wolf. It'll be second, or a little less than 10. Final 65 seconds and counting. Do you believe this? Somewhere on the delay. Man. Weaving his way up the middle. Field goal territory down to the 28. Well, right now they're looking at a 45-yard attempt for a guy that just hit a 41-yarder. And that was his longest so far this year. He had been 0 for 2 before that from beyond the 40 this year. And, and looking at Oklahoma's defense, and look at this huddle. Everybody's got their hands on hips. Everybody's a little bit fatigued. They've been on the field the entire second half. They have. I mean, they have not gotten enough support from their offense, and they are the ones that have been ball controlled and, and had to take snap after snap. And they have to suck it up. It's 36 to 21 in time of possession for Colorado. Now can they get the first down somewhere? No. Oklahoma gets the job done. So it's up to Eberhardt with 18, and it's still rolling. And it's going to be Eberhardt or overtime, it appears. So let it roll. Uh, he's got plenty of leg strength. He's never had a problem getting it there. His problem is over swinging. I mean, he's, he's, he's tried to hit the ball too hard. He's got to calm down, just let the adrenaline ease a little bit, and hit the ball squarely. Yeah, he just had one a few minutes ago from 37 yards away. And he overcooked it. I mean, he swung too hard. Now, the question is, when you try to overcompensate as a kicker, you don't want to leave, push it and leave it out to the right. And that, that's all, all those things are going through his mind now. Oklahoma, of course, calling the timeout to try no, to... No, that was Colorado. Right. Colorado o called it to Oklahoma stop it. Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Oklahoma. Right. They're going to wait till right. they set it up, right. and they will. And they'll, they'll, they'll try to freeze it. And the longer that they make him think about his mechanics and think about the miss and how do I compensate, that's what Oklahoma's going to try to do when they call their final timeout here uh, before 
this kick actually takes place. You notice nobody got near him. Everybody stayed away from Everhart. Yeah. But this is for the win. The shocker. If he can pull it off. But you got to believe there's going to be a timeout call. Yep, and they will. And, and, and you have to think, now, it's going to be a good snap, good hold, and good kick. No, they don't call timeout. It's on its way. Does it stay true? Yes! Wow! Colorado is shocked Oklahoma! Wow! <laughs> the Sooners are stunned on homecoming weekend at Folsom Field. No one could have expected this. Colorado wins their conference opener, and you know, you have to think that there's Boise State voodoo going on here because where was Coach Hawkins before he came to Colorado? He recruited a lot of those kids that beat Oklahoma in the Fiesta Bowl, and the Boise State, State voodoo seems to be still lingering with Oklahoma because Coach Hawkins follows up a big uh, bowl win for his alma, uh, the, the school that he coached for prior to the, the Colorado Buffaloes under his reign. Do are it again to Oklahoma. Are you surprised they did not call a timeout? I am a little surprised. I thought that they'd make him think about it a little bit longer. I really did. So from 45 yards away, Kevin Everhart trying to win it for a second time already this year. He beat Colorado State in the opener, and I said, does it stay true because he's hooked the ball so much? It did. Uh, and I'll tell you, there's a legacy of kickers here. Crosby is now with the Green Bay Packers, and, and, and Coach Dan Hawkins, his, it, it's, it's a signature win right there. He's been looking for a signature win, and that's a signature win. Bob Stoops can't believe it. You know, and, and when you make mistakes on the road, the Big 12, I don't care how good a team you are, those kind of things can happen. Let's go downstairs. Jim Knox. Thank you, Joel. One word describes this one. Wow. Coach, what's going through your head? Well, this is a great football program with a lot of tradition, and uh, we got great players and great coaches, and uh, we know what we're capable of doing. And, you know, I've been a bit behind the eight ball a little bit the last couple of years, but uh, Buffs are coming around a little bit. You got down by 14 points. I talked to you at halftime. You said you still needed to run the football. Yeah. It paid off. Well, you know, we just stayed patient with it, and they're very good, but you can't back away from it. I thought we were able to just crease them a little bit, hang in there, get to them a little bit there in the fourth quarter, and, you know, they turned the ball over a little bit, which hurt them, but, you know, we haven't been doing a good job in the turnovers. This is the first game we've really been on the plus side in the turnovers, so. And a couple of turnovers we gave, gave them 14 points as well. So, really proud of our guys, proud of our staff. It's a great football program. It's one of the top 20 programs in the history of college football, and uh, we're getting her done. Huge plays on offense. Fourth down, you went for it a couple times. Cody really showed some poise in the pocket. Your son. Well, yeah, and I thought Mark called a great game, and our guys had a lot of confidence. I told him the whole week, I said, guys, we're winning this game. And not because I'm the Swami. I just have seen the things come around and seen the progression of it and know how it works. And these guys have been through the fire, came close a couple times, and they were poised and ready to do it, and they did. Talk about your defense. Going into the game, Oklahoma was averaging 61 and a half points per game. You guys just about shut them out in the second half. Well, again, no, no offense to any, anybody else, but we know what our guys are capable. We played some pretty good football teams, but we weren't, you know, mature enough to capitalize and make some plays when we needed it. So Arizona State's a great team. Florida State's a great team, and we played with those guys. So we knew we'd be able to play with Oklahoma. Right now, after the celebration on the field, you're going to head into the locker room. What are you going to tell your team? Well, again, just all the things we keep talking about. It's, it's not magic dust. We've done this many times. We thought we'd get it done versus Georgia last year. It didn't happen. Set us back a little bit. I think it'll be great momentum for these guys to continue to play with confidence. And then you have that ultimate buy-in. So we just got to keep hammering this thing. We're, you know, administration's helping us. We're going to be back in the picture here. We're good to go. Yes, you are back in the picture. Congratulations, Coach Joel. Unbelievable conference opener. Amazing. And disbelief over on the Oklahoma side. Our Kia Zeros. Well, well, before we get to our wireless call of the game, I yeah. thought that it could hook. And he, it almost did. He did a good job of compensating. He didn't he didn't overswing. You know, and uh and, and he it was the pendulum clock swing right there. And Coach Hawkins says, Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was huge. And he hit in the opener in overtime. A field goal to beat Colorado State. So Kevin Eberhardt waited a long time. In fact, waited behind Mason Crosby. He's a senior from Broomfield, Colorado. So Eberhardt 
finally gets his opportunity and he makes the most of it against the Oklahoma Sooners. I, I think a big key in the game is when they fell behind 24 7 Colorado did not throw their game plans away. They said we're staying the course. We're going to run it. We're going to throw it. We're going to be balanced. And then Oklahoma started giving the football up. Turnovers are deadly. Turnovers are the great equalizer no matter what the situation in, in Oklahoma equalized the game with their giveaways. It may take a while before they clear the field here at Folsom. Time for our Kia Sarah wireless call to the game. Yeah, this us. is for the win. The shocker. If you can pull it off. But you got to believe there's going to be a timeout call. Yep, and they will. And, and, and you have to think, now, it's going to be a good snap, good hold, and good kick. No, they don't call timeout. It's on its way. Does it stay true? Yes! Wow! Colorado is shocked Oklahoma! Wow! Back downstairs, Jim Knox. All right, thank you, Joe. I just pulled Dusty Sprague out of the celebration. It's pandemonium back there. You caught one of the touchdowns, the last touchdown. What was going through your head at that time? Uh, catch the ball, really. Uh, the easy job. Everybody did their job on the line, and and uh, Steph ran that fake well. All I had to do, Cody threw a great ball. All I had to do is catch it, and that was the only thing on my mind. Take us through that final drive that set up that field goal. What was the, what was the mood in the huddle? What was going through? We just knew we had to take care of the ball. We had to pound it in there, and we had to go score. You know, whether it was three or seven, we knew we were going to score, and we knew we were going to win this game. Talk to Coach Hawkins, and you talk about knowing you're going to win this game all week. He told you guys, you guys are going to win this game. We're going to win this game. Yeah, yeah he, he told us all week, you know, we're not surprised at all. Uh, now we got to just get back to the drawing board. I'm sure there's things we got to correct tomorrow. And uh, we got Baylor next week, and we got to keep rolling in Big 12 play here. What does it do for a program like you guys? Only ten, two wins last year. You come in this year off to a little slow start, but then again, you upset the third-ranked team in the nation today. Uh, it's a great momentum booster. You know, we've been a close, and we've been close, and we've been close, and we're all tired of saying how close we are. You know, we played Florida State tough. We played Georgia tough last year. We needed a big win, and uh, the guys came through, and we played hard today and got one. Right, we'll let you get back to the celebration. Appreciate the time, Joel. All right, Noxie, as much as the offense did come through, and got the points at the end, they wouldn't have been in position had it not been for a defensive effort that held Oklahoma to 230 yards of total offense and just 12 first downs. And special teams, punt fumble. Okay. Hell of Dave, we won't forget, Dave. Okay, we won't forget for sure. For Dave Lappin, Jim Knox, I'm Joel Myers. Thanks for joining us. The Big 12 opener for the defending champions. They'd like to forget it. Oklahoma. Stunned by Colorado 27 to 24. UCLA.